And what was it, 17 or 16? 17. All right. All right, I'm recording. All right, guys. Uh, podcast number 17 with Justin Holden. Yep. Take two. We, we were just recording for about half an hour and I realized that I forgot to press record on the, uh, on the microphones. Some people might say that's the best footage that's been, you know, put so, out there so far. But So we just said the most controversial shit for half an hour and no one will ever hear it. It's gone, but that's cool. <laughs> These things happen. All right. Well, um, where, where, you know, where we left off was basically just introducing you, which is a good place to start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, I think, you're from New Zealand. Yep. Been in Sydney 10 years in October, so nine and a bit so far. Yeah, no, it's been good. And no. your, your business partner, Will? So, yeah, my best friend slash sort of semi-business partner, Will, who yeah. um, is still in New Zealand. He lives probably in the worst city in New Zealand, Palmerston North. Um, I wouldn't know. John Cleese went there once and said, basically said, um, yeah, he wanted to talk, neck himself within 15 minutes of being there. If you go there, you understand it's not the greatest place. Okay. Um, so he lives over there. Um, I love New Zealand, though. Like, I, it's just, oh, I couldn't imagine a bad place in New Zealand. Oh, it's, I don't know. Parts of New Zealand are great. Some parts aren't so great. Um, yeah, you have to go there. It's very I'm sure. like, yeah. That's every every place is like that. Yeah, a little bit small minded once you get out of the big cities. It, it's really funny because every New Zealander I've ever met goes on and on about how amazing New Zealand is, and it's almost almost makes me wonder what are you doing here then. Mm. Yeah, it, but that that's the first time I've heard a New Zealander actually say something bad about New Zealand. Well, New Zealand's not. <laughs> It's like everywhere. You've got good parts and bad parts. And yeah. I, I don't know. I like, in life, I like to call a spade a spade or a shovel. You know, um, I'm not going to mince my words. I wouldn't recommend anyone goes on a holiday to Palmerston North. There's to nothing. Place, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not going to send you somewhere that's nasty. Hey, go to Queenstown. Go, go see the beautiful sights. Sure. But yeah, I'm not going to send you there. It'd be like telling someone to come to Sydney and go on a holiday for five, five weeks in Penrith. It's, yeah, it's not what someone comes to Sydney to see. They come to see Bondi. They come to see the. Harbour Bridge, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah, not a whole, yeah, not not a whole, not well, not a whole heap of industrial oh, yeah. buildings. Yeah. It, it's about <laughs> like going for where like the you know like the touristy stuff is, the beautiful sights are. Palmerston North hasn't got it, but anyway, so he lives over there. And are I've, you are you here for like work primarily? Like, is that I mean, New, I find it always interesting. Why is a New Zealander in Sydney? Because Sydney is like. Sydney is so expensive and it's so full on. But if you're not here to, if you're not here to make money, then what are you here for? Especially if you're from New Zealand. So I got made redundant in New Zealand um, when I was, yeah, about 25, 26. I had a bit of cash. Um, I had a lot of friends in Sydney because I went uh, originally did a degree in hotel management. So um, I had a lot of friends who were in Sydney. Um, working in the hospitality or had moved over because part of our course was you had to do some on-site training as part of the course. A lot of people had come to Sydney, they all come back. Mm. Mate basically said, you can come and crash on my couch and pay no rent and live with me for a couple of months while you sort your life out if you moved over. I was like, well, sweet as, I've been made redundant, I've got a bit of cash, why not? And it wasn't so expensive. It wasn't as that, bad that, that as time. I thought it was. Um, yeah. I lived on the shore. He said to me, it's not as bad as people think. I moved yeah. over, I had a job a week later. I'm still with the same company and, yeah, I've been here ever since. What, what do you do again? So I... Uh, it was something dry. It, <laughs> it's really boring. Um, I do account management or debt slavery for... Uh, um, cloud services IT company. Basically, I try to appease customers and make them happy. Ah, uh, so meetings all uh, day? A lot of meetings, a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, a lot of buttering people up. But it pays the bills. The company's been good to me and I've been there nine but years. So so I, you, you use work as a stability thing? Yes, yeah, stability, keeping people happy, ensuring that they don't go away or... Basically, talking to people and ensuring that their needs are met and that they don't feel neglected or missing out. A lot of people sign people up for companies and business and whatnot. And once they've got the business, they disappear. And then they wonder why the customer disappears in a few years' time. Well, if you don't speak to your customers, you don't relate to them, you don't talk to them, when someone else comes in, they're going to cut your lunch. It's the same as in a relationship. If you don't talk to your girlfriend for two years yeah. and some other dude starts talking to her, mate, she's gone because she's been shown some attention from someone else. It's simple. It's basically just giving people attention is 
probably the easiest way to break down my job. It's interesting. I mean, you've you've had multiple businesses running on, on your own, like your own initi- initiatives. Yep. And they've been really amazing too. Like I remember there was uh, Easy Sliders one, which is yep. those uh, try drift try yeah drift. That drift, was a bit of a tries. fad. Um, yeah. Easy Slider. Sort of on hold at the moment. Um, yeah, that was very much a fad product. Um, mm. Nowadays, Will's really into making, well, we do a lot of production in, production for other companies, but we're working really intensely with a company that does septic tanks and doing a lot of development into water products and collection of water, saving yeah. of water, filters and devices that basically drain water, filter it, and allow it to go into big tanks to save water. Because um, myself and Will are quite driven by environmental things. Yeah, I noticed that with the... Uh, you need to talk about that trout, uh, that farming, that thing that you were working on Oh, aquaponics. Ago. So growing fish and then using the fish poo to basically... Um, grow plants. Grow plants. And it's like a life cycle sort of development way of creating food. Basically, you just feed fish, they shit into the water. Um, you filter their water across your plants, that's your fa- plant food. The water's actually cleaned by going through the soil and down into the plants, collected and then dropped back into the fish tank. Mm. We, we Was that another fad thing? Not a fad thing, we're still developing that. Right. It's something that's going to take us a long time to develop and bring to market, but it's something that we want to... Eventually, we'd love to like have products where we can go to Africa, drop a container in Africa, and it's got the ability to help people create and store water and also feed themselves. Yeah. Like, we, we don't just want to make money. We want to change the world or help the world in some way by I, creating I, I devices that. and products that help people. It's, it's, really, it's really interesting because you also had something in development that was like a cow feeder. Cow feeder. So that's still sitting there ready to go. But unfortunately, the dairy industry in New Zealand sort of crashed a little bit at the moment. Um, Dairy farmers aren't getting big payouts from the main corporation. Mm. So there's no money for us to bring that to market because to bring it to market now, no one's going to buy it. So we need the Mm. price of milk to go back up through the roof. And then when that happens, um, we'll go and uh, bring that product into market and hit up some farmers. But this is the thing like, so you have a full time job. You have a business partner who's in another country and you somehow have the time to work on ideas that aren't safe. You know what I mean? That Easy Slider was a, a, a bit of a fad, sure, but these other things that you've been working on uh, 100% have design culture and it's like it's almost like you're... Because you're an F1 nut, like you're a motorsport nut, but you're maybe more of a nut in terms of the technical aspect of Formula One. And so I see almost like design and engineering, like a, like a passion for it. It's, it. I like design and I like built. So I can't draw and I cannot paint and I've got no skills in that way whatsoever. You give me, no, tell me to draw something and you'll get a stick figure back. But give me some Lego, some Technic Lego, and yeah, tell me yeah, to build yeah. something, and I can make something. I'll make a cool-looking car or I something get, like that. I get that vibe from you. Like that, all, this whole time that we've known each other, you've always chased stuff that was tech, technical, yeah, um, and original as well. Yeah, you know, and you're not scared to. You, I know what I'm good at, to, and I also know what I can't do, and I think that's something. Yeah. It's quite important in life to know what you're good at and know what you you're bad at, because then at least. I'm quite open to ask for help for the things that I'm not good at. And that's why I reached out mm. to you. I've got no ability to make something look sexy or sellable or something like that. Whereas yourself, you're amazing at that. You gave us the probably the grousest looking logo ever. Mm-hmm. It was freaking awesome. Um, we still wear the t-shirts. And... <laughs> Whereas yeah. if it had been me, it would have ended up some fr- horrible font out of word re-edited and pumped out with some horrible word colors and it just it never would have looked right so it's funny like i had uh steven was from acquired taste on the podcast a couple ago and yep. uh and maybe maybe half a year ago he sent me a logo that he did for the new acquired taste you know he wanted to relaunch and it was um just one of those cheap nasty fonts that you just yep. go up online and buy a cheap font whack it together and yeah. he goes, what do you think, Justin? And I'm like, man, you love it, right? He goes, yeah, I think it's awesome. You know, I spent all night or three nights working on it. 
Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but you're not a designer and any professional designer out there is going to look at this and think it's horrible yep. for, for these reasons. Yeah. And from that, I suppose you can either take offense, which I think he, half of it was like he was invested in that. So yeah. it hurts when you hear something like that. Yeah. And, you know, but it's awesome that he's come to and realized that, you know, that you can be stubborn about things or you can try to do things the right way. I think there's a way of, you know, it's also in the way that you tell people things as well like that. If you give positive feedback and negative feedback, but also tell them the reasons that you don't like something, people tend right. to find that. I think sometimes with the internet, people are quite quick to make a comment on a Facebook post or on a sure. YouTube video or something. Mm. I'm, I'm the same. Oh, I do it all the time. I rage at something. I mean, I think to myself, man, you're going to look like a dick if someone reads that comment in about five, ten minutes. So I go yeah. back and edit it. Edit and it, yeah, Almost same. soften it or well, still make the same comment but give some sort of feedback as well. like Make it constructive, hey, basically. Yeah, hey, hey, I didn't enjoy the video because uh -huh. this, maybe you should de in it or there didn't need to be like 20 minutes of continuous burnouts at the end of it. Yeah. Not really interesting at that stage, sort of. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Like, I, I mean, I, I, I always um, find that people can either take it uh, in, a, in a bad way like that, but they need that. it's only because they don't understand I'm not trying to be malicious you know what I mean yeah. like they don't get that because there's so much many people out there that'll give them praise and that they'll happily take yeah. because they may be other type of people that need praise you know what I mean but it, it, it's interesting like it <sighs> I find it a generational thing almost um I don't know I this is very generic to say but I think the younger generation haven't been exposed to so much criticism as such and they struggle with it it's like I was reading an article last mm. week that they want to make a 50% mark an A at school so that kids don't feel so depressed when they don't get A's at school because yeah. they it, want everyone to feel the same but life's about failure there, there's success and failure in life I've had plenty of failures but you, it's how you deal with that and how you pick yourself up and move on from it it's yeah I, I think you grow from it almost and you've got to have some bad experiences in life because life isn't pretty. It's no, I talk about that all the time. You know, it's almost like I, I, I'm almost begging for more full on experiences just so that I can feel what it's like to be building yourself back up. You well, know? I learned a lot from Easy Slider. We jumped on a product that was a fad. Should I have jumped into a fad product? Probably not. We mm. spent a lot of money on a mold and we barely made enough money to pay the mold back. We didn't make yeah. much money from the product, mm. but I learned a heck of a lot in setting up that company and getting the mold made, getting the product out there. Learned a lot about Facebook, learned a lot about blogging at that stage. Yeah. Now we're not even selling the wheels. We're barely, the website's crashed, someone hacked it and I can't get hold of my guy who's hosting it because he's in Thailand somewhere. So um, That's a mess. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll get it fixed up at some stage. But I did, I've learned a lot from that. And going forward, we've got some ideas that we're going to use from what our learnings from that later this year. So It's really, it's really interesting. Like I... Uh, you know, my old business partner and I in the uh, design business, we, we just knew early on that, my God, we are, as graphic designers, we're so capable of setting up businesses. Yeah. It's like we can do everything from creating the logo, the brand, through to the business card and stationery and yep. right through to the way... Um, the website looks and print material, brochures. I mean, my God, there's so much more to design than just design. There's a whole lot of marketing involved in it as well. Yep. So, you know, when you're, when you're just doing web, web work or design work for others, you, you just, we, we were sort of had the, 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 like the horse binders on just yep. for that yep. in, the, in the start. But then as we went on, we thought, fuck, why don't we just save... 10, 20 grand and design ourselves a logo yep. and a website. Yep. And we started creating our own communities and brands. And it's like, my God, it's so, um, it's so easy when you know how, Yeah, you know what I mean? And to expect another client or any client to get as addicted as I am, it's so difficult because it's so hard to get someone to place importance on something they don't understand, right? And I also value. think you've got a passion for it and other people, ha you have to have a passion in what you do. I but they will, if you have a 
a passion for creating a brand and you're just out in the dark, just posting on Facebook, you're getting likes and stuff like that, but you don't really know what you're doing, you no. see, because you, you don't know why, you don't know how. But then when, when, you, when, you, when it's explained to you, you, um, oh my God, you just get so addicted to it because it's like... Uh, it's like it's when you it's learn. A, it's like enlightenment almost, you know, just to see how Stephen is so into it now. Like every day is chipping away at it. Yeah. But it's so funny how before there was so much more fear around, yep. around it to the point where it was debilitating. It was almost like he didn't know where to start. Yep. And I think that's that's what. I think fear and not knowing where to start actually hinders a lot of people from. Sometimes you just got to dive in. I know it's... I it's know hard it, if you don't have it, any, like... If, even if you don't have any idea, you've just got to mm. ask someone or just give it a try. I mean, from yeah. there, quite often, you'll... Once you start, you'll find others sometimes to jump on or at least provide advice. But until you mm. actually do something, a lot of people think you just talk. Mm. Um, you've sometimes got to show to them, I'm actually committed, I am going to give this a crack. I mean, quite often, you'll find other people to jump in and actually give you a hand because they're like, well... Okay, he's not doing the greatest job, but at least he's trying. I'm happy to help someone who's trying in life. As long as you can show that you've got that drive, right? Yeah, and that, yeah. I mean, like, I, I also know a lot of people, myself included, that um, start things and then they just fizzle out. You know yeah. what I mean? And what sucks about those things is that you did G people up enough to, for them to back you in it, and then you realize that uh, you're the one that... I mean, if, if you're not the one leading the thing, then it's never going to take off. No. And then if you drop the ball in it, well, then it's going to die. Yeah, well, you've, yeah, got to, you've got to continue or follow through with what you start. Um, you can only expect others to. It, it's you can only expect others to put in as much effort as you put in yourself. If they're not as passionate about something as you, you can't expect someone else to work ten hours a day when you're only working six hours a day on something. Because they're like, well, this is his love. Why am I going to put my heart, soul, and effort into it if he's not putting his heart, soul, and effort? That's into the hardest it? part, I reckon, especially when you're younger and you you see it as black and white. Yeah. When you when you see like um, I'm definitely doing eighty percent of the work here, my business partner's not. Whereas when you look at the bigger picture in life, you think of like maybe um, a couple in their eighties or something like that. And you're like, obviously they've had fights. Yeah. Obviously they just saw the bigger picture and they've continued. They've just, they, they, they worked it out and yep. it's kind of like, it's easy to be in the moment and go, man, I'm feeling resentment issues for the amount of work I'm putting in. But then if you realize that you're only human and that there are going to be moments in your life where you, you're down Yep. and you're just not capable of working, hopefully that's when your other partner that hasn't been working as much just steps it up. Yep. And, and it's it, also... It's, it's funny that it's taken me so long to learn that, you know, like um, it's almost like if I have it my way, I'd just get rid of everyone and just clone myself and I'd be happy with that. <laughs> yep. But it's like, of course somebody else is going to do it not exactly like how I would do it. You know, if I give a design job to someone, surely I'm going to be able to... I would have moved this over there or that, but it's like you got to let go at some point. You do because you can't do everything in life. It's people burn out when they try and control everything and do everything as well. You've got to have a break and you've got to know your limits. And I think that's the thing as well in growing in life is learning to accept and let other people have a go and having mm. actually giving trust to someone else and saying, you know what, I trust you. I know you've done it so many times or, you know what, I just trust you to do it. And it it's difficult though. You it know is, I mean? it's really, it's... really hard and it, trust is something that can be hard to earn but lost very, very quickly is something as well. So you might build up a lot of trust with someone, you know, but then they stuff things up once. That's enough. And that's enough. Like you can yeah. mentally burn them straight away after that. Like, yeah. And that's why I say trust is, it's very hard to earn from some people, but you can give it away Throw it away so quickly over... Oh, I don't know any partnership thing. that's like super solid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And at the same time, being a solo um, business owner, I don't think is... It, it's almost like why? It, so, sometimes I think like um, if you're the one starting up a business and yes, you are happy with how it's going financially and you're also happy with the ethos of it. Just say you're happy with the way it's running, you're happy with the general vibe that it puts out. Yeah. But then you're, you realise that if you walk away from this to have a half a year holiday, 
it all just fucking falls apart. Like yep. it's not McDonald's where you've got this system in place, you know, yep. like it's really hard to get businesses to that level, I think. Yep. But I mean, I'm just talking about generally speaking, uh, I've started up so many businesses that I almost wonder why sometimes because you do it, everyone hops on the bandwagon because that's what people do. Yep. But then in the bigger picture, I almost look at bandwagons as being not necessarily a cool thing. I'm starting to think that they're actually kind of negative. And so everyone hops on your bandwagon and then like, then, then I'm posting stuff and people are saying, oh, fuck this. You guys used to be cool once. And I'm like, but it's still me posting stuff. It's just me. It's like, it's h hilarious that like, it almost makes you wonder. Things are cool until too many people jump on it and right. then it becomes uncool. But even though... And that's what I'm saying. With, we, we, we're a, talking about with YouTube human, and it, Netflix and everything was... Foxtel was cool once, no ads. And now, this is the thing. Everything gets to a point of saturation almost where people like games, big AAA games manufacturers, e everyone that gets to that point it's like everything. Slipped. I've seen so many feds in life. Like everyone had a Tamagotchi at one stage. Everyone had a yo-yo at one stage. Uh, yo-yos, yeah. <laughs> everyone had, in New Zealand, they had the shatter rings. And, and what kind of person are you if you ignore every fad just because it is a fad? I mean, yeah. that's also difficult, right? Yeah, 100%. I think you just got to get into it, have a go. If it's for you, it's for you and carry on. But it's interesting to watch when fads dive and like all of a sudden... Facebook's full of them, like, and YouTube's full of them as well. So right. you see them like the video fads, like let's do this video. And for two or three weeks, your feed's full of people doing dumb throwing ice buckets over their right. heads or something. Because that's the key word yeah. of the moment. And then all of a sudden, it's over. And, and they die so quickly these days. Like people move on from things so fast. It's, yeah. But it's funny how even though media, I, I agree with you there. I think media moves so fast, but people hang on to emotional shit yeah. because they're only human, right? Yep. So someone says something nasty, there's a big fight that day. It's entertainment for the one day, man. People whip out the popcorn, everyone's checking it out. Yep. Next thing you know, it's got thousands of views, hundreds of comments. But within a week, it's less gone. than a week, it's down the bottom of the Facebook yeah. cesspool. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but it's hilarious how people will still be cut about it. It's, yeah. it's like um, YouTube is worse. This is what I'm finding, right? Because it's like uh, if you get called out these days, like just say, just say in the 80s, you got called out for a, a company. Maybe you were cheating. I don't know. Maybe your restaurant was like buying chicken wings from another cafe yeah. and then you're reselling them. No one's going to find out. The newspaper's gone tomorrow. No one buys well, that paper because yeah. that paper's gone. You can't yeah, really buy that. Yeah, the news was always 24 hours right, late. Right. Unless right. you so watch it, the 6 o'clock news at night, we, my parents always did. And they don't repeat the news, right? No. It's gone. Whereas YouTube is nasty in that. Everything's in your face and held in your face these days. And that's the thing like... How many people will upload like a clip of you doing something bad? Like Same clip put on 50,000 people's channel because right. every person wants that clip on their channel hoping that someone's going to go, right. oh, wicked, I've searched it and I found this guy's channel. Now I'm watching it on their channel. It's, 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 so it's, it is nasty now. Do yeah. you know what I mean? It's like... Um, it's like the whole bullying thing. Like, all right, mate, I was tall, skinny and wore glasses and had braces at high school. I got heaps of shit. But shit finished at 3.30 when I went home. It didn't start again until 8 in the morning. These days, kids are still getting attacked when you get home. It's... yeah. It's everywhere. It's sort of well, yeah. It's it's like you're so connected. Like I, that's the thing. I have not answered emails in a very long time, um, and I'm really bad with mobile phones in general. Like yeah. I just, like, I'm trying to break from uh, Facebook and my mobile phone at the moment. And it's it's like when it rings. Like when the when the mobile rings, I instantly, dread. instantly go fuck. Like. Fuck. And then when, it, you know, when you hang up the phone with someone, it could be someone you love too, but yeah. then it rings again. Like yeah. as soon as you sat back down. Yeah. yeah it's a stressful it, moment. It's, and it's like, man, it, like I find the doorbell stressful too. Cause yeah. it, there's something about this thing stopping you. Yeah. You it's know, it's that and, breaking and, of the zone or the moment thing. It's like we were talking right. about earlier with music and and YouTube with the with, with the ads, ads in, in the middle them. of a clip, right? When yeah. you're into something, there's nothing worse than being interrupted when you're watching or doing something. It sucks. Like, yeah, and the same thing with the phone. It's that mental 
dun, 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 who's on the phone, what do they want, and why are they calling me? That's the first three things that go through my head. I mean, you look at it, right. and it's a private number, and that's even worse. They just yeah. get, I just bar them. They, well, yeah, and, and, and this is the thing. Like People have um, apps with notifications. Like I turn every single notification off, but the ones that I don't catch when I first install an app, yeah, it'll make a ding. Like even Google Calendar will make a ding at 10 to midnight to let me know what's happening the next day. Yeah. But I just woke up to check out. I was in, I was in, I was in deep sleep. Yeah. So it's kind of like these notifications for other people are going off all night. Like yeah. not for me because I've turned them all off, but other people. I've turned my, I, t- I actually turn, physically turn the phone off now once I go to sleep. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I, I was watching um, a podcast. I don't remember. I don't remember who it was or what it was, but it was about a dude who is really into technology. Yeah. So much so that he's set up his house in the hills somewhere and it's all about not being wired, especially at night. So at night, he's got it literally like a kill switch yep. for his entire house. Yep. And it's right next to his bed and he hits this kill switch and literally every little electrical item like modems and everything just turn off so there's no little hums or buzzes yeah. and, he, and he believes that he, it's better for him yeah. he, he legit believes it he's done studies on how wi-fi when you walk into a room with wi-fi it does change your brain waves yep it's freaky shit oh it wouldn't surprise me at all i mean and and it doesn't surprise me either because it's like uh, look at microwaves right like i know I get a bad feeling every time. It's just the same feeling you get when you're drinking a Coca-Cola. Yeah. You, you know it's not good for you. Yeah. Like you, you just deep down, you know that microwaving shit is just... Yeah, well, yeah. And how old is everyone's microwaves? Like, when do you replace them? You, you know what I mean? It's like... Yeah. The old spoon in the 1980s microwave and it just starts sparking and you're like, ooh, wonder what it's doing to my food. Well, like, the light in there is starting yeah. to blink. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm just saying like the things that we're used to, like the first iPhone could pick up a paperclip if yeah. you put it next to it. So that's a magnet that people were putting. Um, Joe Rogan had a, a, a mentioned about a doctor who, uh, one of his mates, sorry, one of his mates turns out he had cancer in his left butt cheek, right? And the doctor's like, that's a very specific, weird place to have cancer in your left butt cheek. You know, do you, what do you do? Do you have a phone in that? He goes, yeah, that's where I put my fucking phone. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is. It's, it's the long-term effects and we don't know, like, what we're doing to ourselves because we. It's freaky, isn't it? We've come so far in the, well, not this century, but the last century, human development was just yeah. crazy. Um, and a lot of it was pretty unchecked. We've gone pretty, pretty out there pretty fast and. Yeah, I don't know. We'll start seeing the consequences maybe in 50 or 60 years' time. But as said, there was another article I read in the paper this week. You're already beginning to see the consequences in kids. Um, yeah. Too much uh, iPhone and too much touchpads at young age. Well, then they're going to school, you're unable to hold pencils and they can't use freaking monkey bars. Right, so that's, saying, that's not about intelligence then, though. That's about something like someone not being able to drive manual. It's but, basically they're saying now that because parents don't send kids out in the garden, you don't go and play, you don't go, it's just give them a screen t- time tablet. Yeah. That the only thing they're coming to school, they are, they're losing all the fine motor skills. You're losing your ability because you're basically getting on a skateboard. That's how you learn to skate. You've got to yeah, do it. Not Tony Hawk skateboarding. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not Tony Hawk. You've got to actually do it. And that's what they're saying now. They're finding a lot of kids, because they don't do anything, they're losing their ability. So that, that, it's kind of scary because yeah. maybe 20 years from now, we'll have no kids who can skate because they've never actually jumped on a board or right. jumped on a freaking scooter because it's parents are just given them. And well, there's a well, fear also parents think well. that it's dangerous. Do you know what I mean? It's dangerous that's for kids other. to be out on the street and it's dangerous when they fall down. And Yeah. You know, There's a culture of fear of yeah. hurting and hurt, but man, I've smashed myself on skateboards, on BMXs. I did right. so many dumb things growing up. Yeah, yeah, but you learn from them. Like, yeah, if you and if you don't learn from them, then you're never going to know what pain is and what. You well, know. this is the thing. It's almost been taken away from them all. Like, you yeah. know, I remember when my cousins first came over from overseas, their parents were like, "No, you're not going to ride bicycles on the street with Justin. No fucking way. You'll get killed." Yeah, and that you know it comes from a 
love and stuff, but that rebellious Australian culture is dying. Do you know what I mean? It's oh, 100%. Like, it's like you know, it's, all the kids seem these days get driven to school. I remember like being bicycle gang with about five mates on the way to school of us stop at the dairy to buy lollies when you know you ride your bike to school and you're like a gang on the way home. You're You'd all... never think that we would ever be a granny state, like from yeah. our childhood, no. well, my childhood here. Yeah. You, you would never have thought that what's happened would have happened, like yeah. where people would just go straight home and be scared. Like, you, like, you, like, I'll be honest and say in an Uber yesterday, this guy would just, I got a sketchy vibe off this guy. Yeah. Right. And, and then he goes, do you want a drink, mate? You want a drink? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm all right. I thought water. He goes, no, I got some ginger beer, like really good ginger beer. And I instantly just thought, and he goes, oh, then I said, no. He goes, oh, what about some chocolate? Tell some chocolate. There's some chocolate right next to you in the door card. And I'm like, man, is this guy trying to drug me or something? It's the yeah. honest first thing I thought. And I'm not even a chick. Do you know what I mean? Like if I was a chick. That's a bit I'd, sketchy. I'd, I'd be a little bit like, why is he pushing me so hard to drink this ginger beer? Like yep. it's nighttime. It's raining. I just want to get home. Yep. Am I going to drink this thing and like pass out in the car? And why was I thinking that? Yeah. Because. It's ridiculous. It's like ridiculous how. When I was young, we just got home, got out of the got out of the tie, and then hopped on a skateboard and hung out with kids that were also five, six, seven years old. Yeah, on the streets and just like oh, mate, my parents. I come from small country in New Zealand. We didn't even lock the house. Exactly, we didn't have bars on our windows or nothing. We put them on after we got robbed, like for the fourth or fifth time. But it's like my mum used to own a little convertible thing, and she used to park it in town with all her shit sitting in the centre console, all her bags in it. No, no putting the roof up and just walk away. No. And she'd go back an hour later and everything's still sitting there. People just... Uh. It's apparently um, the US and Canada is like that. Apparently, literally, you cross the border into Canada and there's no bars on windows and no guns. Yeah. And it's hilarious yeah. how they could be so next door. Yeah. And it's just the mentality of the people that live there. Again, I think America's got a very big fear. It's driven in America, fear. Fear mm. of everything. Fear of this, fear of that, fear of... Because when people are scared, it's easier to control people. I, I just hate that. I hate that, like, there's, uh, in general in life, that there's this, you know, there's women and men trying to create this equality thing, but it's not even about equality. I think it's more about just a genuine lack of respect in general. It, I, th it, it, I think it is a genuine... It's not even male or female. It's that's just what I'm a, saying. Yeah, it's a genuine lack of... A, respect each to each other everyone's just so i don't know we've almost become to the point where we just we'll do anything to get above the person in front of us um and, everyone's uh, so driven to become successful or it's it's very dog eat dog like, it, it is and people will do something bad in order to get a step up too right yeah. like it, we know with motorsport like they're all cheating or finding a, a yeah. way the, the other day um this whole area had garbage cleanup yeah. And I used to be the kid that used to go around fixing up bikes and then putting them up on eBay or something. And, and I'd be happy because I'd, A, I'd get my money's worth yep. for the time that I put in to resurrect the bike. And, and B, B it's a good bike for the was, environment. Right. And then um, and somebody else was riding it. This cool bicycle that was going to die. Yep. But then, you know, when I, do, when I did used to do that, you'd see the professionals come out with their proper trucks and their oh, the picket shit up to, pickets, to, yeah. to sell. And then it's like... There's nothing really stopping them from picking up those, you know, those free bikes that are on the, and then they just rip, yeah. rip off all the pedals and anything you can get. A, this is what I'm saying. Like these, sometimes there's some scum out there that'll just like take advantage of anything. It's the same people who go to frickin' when um, 7 Eleven has the free Slurpee and you see the same person go on about 12 times during the days. And I get it if you're a kid, right? But that, I, that's what I don't like. It's like this, what I'm finding hard about life these days is the kids having a voice in general. And I hate saying kids, but it's like once upon a time we did have no internet and a kid didn't have a voice. If you yeah. had a voice, it was because you worked hard for it. You were successful and people listened to you and they found you and it was hard. Yeah. You know, uh, you had to stand on the box and to be heard. Yeah, well, hopefully got a rip it article in a Rip It Up magazine that was handed out once a month at Macca's. Right, whereas... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, these kids having, like... Everyone... like for, for me to fight with someone on Facebook... And that person, I don't know what age they are. I don't know that they could be 20 or 40. It's ridiculous. 
and it's the, what, and there's it's so what's wrong many the of them and they'll pack hunt as well so they'll get all their mates to start attacking you and that's just and this is this is it, what then, i feel and like then is, it goes crazy like next thing you'll just see the random names start getting just tagged in under the articles on facebook and it Man, and and I, I used to always think it was just kids, but I'm starting to see some. Like I, I'm a YouTube addict, just like you are. I'm a, I don't watch anything else really, but YouTube. But um, like initially, I started doing searching on um people who key cars because yeah. I'm like, it's got to be kids, right? It's got to be. And most of the time, it is. Yeah. So when I look at the videos, surveillance videos, it's some jealous kid or yeah. jealous next door neighbor. Um, but it's amazing how many nasty things like that are done by people oh, in their so many older sour old people out there so you watch all those neighbors from hell videos on facebook and there's people just getting so worked up and so upset over and it always starts over the most pathetic things like it's nasty, they put a right? mailbox at the end of their driveway and you don't like my mailbox and now i'm gonna try and ruin your life over it. it's like just talk to each other and work out what the it's yeah, we just get so, people just get so upset over the most pathetic things like neighbors, neighbor stories, uh, especially the male thing. Like um, this guy in the states put an explosive thing in the fake package in front of his house, yeah. and just filmed that. Yeah. And these people would literally like these junkies, man, yeah. low life scum, would literally drive past, reverse, pull over, go down and pick it up. Yeah. And it's like, man, like anyone that's ever lost a parcel so knows right. that it's a shit feeling. It's, oh, it's a the shit worst. feeling when your parcel, because you've been waiting for it, you know, you're excited and, and, and it doesn't get there. And next thing you know, you're emailing people and they're like, oh, just wait, wait another two weeks. Yeah. You wait another two weeks, it still hasn't arrived. And they're like, right, well, we can't send you another one. I'll give you a refund. And you don't get it. You All never because get someone what you want stole it. Yep. The work. There's only one thing worse than it's the Australia Post letter in the box. I mean, you're having to try and get to the post office, which has the most ridiculous opening hours to go and get it's your the post. Australia Post sucks. Oh, man. It's like their post offices are never open when normal people are like wanting to use them or go and pick up a parcel. I've never had a good experience. No. In an, it's as bad as the RTA. I oh, mean, and there's it, always it's worse, a actually. line. And it's yeah. like. It's always. It's actually out the post office to yeah. the line most of the time. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just don't get how the post service can be so inefficient. It's not a freaking hard job. It's you stick a stamp on a letter, you hand the stamp. You know what I mean? It shouldn't it's be. It shouldn't be rocket science. And the amount of mail messages that I get for yeah. the house next door. Yeah. I mean, I'm, if everyone's getting the same problem, then there's something wrong with the system. Oh, hundred percent. So yeah. It's like it's getting to a point where, as well, in, neighborhoods were much better in the '80s because if you got your next door neighbor's mail. You would give it to them. Yeah. Whereas these days, I have a mate who gets goodies in the mail. Yeah. And he knows for a fact that the next door house gets his mail sometimes by accident, and but he, he can't never... prove it. Yeah. He's like, I know that guy's kept my my gear. Yeah. Because there's always something cool. Yeah. So the way the world works today is that you don't even know your neighbors. No. They, no. Oh, 100 percent not. We don't. We don't talk over. I mean, I still do because I'm old school. But I don't think anyone new school talks the over the fence, you know, to oh. their neighbours. When we moved to New, well, when my parents immigrated to New Zealand, I think it was 1980 or 81. They moved to a place. We lived in a place called Rakai, which is a really small small town. We lived in a farm out in the country. They literally had a parcel turn up to them, which was to Mr. and Mrs. Holden, Rakai, New Zealand, and the but, parcel made it to the farm. Yeah, right. Everyone knew everyone in town. Like, oh, that's cool. the new Pommy family that's moved over from the UK. Yeah. Like, oh, that letter's from the UK. That's got to be for them. Next thing the letter turns up, it's you wouldn't know, get right? that these days. That no. letter would be returned to sender. Thank you very much. Too much hard work. If anything, you get your neighbour trying to sue you for something. Or, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. you get nastiness. But yeah. it, it's it's. I don't know, man. It's just like this whole me doing youthful brands because I was a youthful person. And now that I'm 43 this year, I think, or Something. I think I'm 40, 43 this year. <laughs> so it's kind of like interesting that I'm running a youthful brand still because I think I'm forever going to be. 
Well, I think that's Youthful. more mentality who you are, though, because, again, um, what's his face? Ken Block, he's in his mid-40s, and he's still running several youthful brands. Yeah, but that's almost... That's the thing. Like, I, I've almost realised I don't want to be like that. You I don't want to be... I don't want to be... I don't want to meet... I hate kids in general, so I'm a fuck. I'm meant to stop saying that this year. I said to myself this year that I would never say that. So I don't enjoy. I, I don't. I dislike. I dislike children. I don't, I don't hate children. Yeah. I dislike being around them because I find oh. them a little bit intense and annoying. But they're very demanding. That's the thing. Like I don't can't feel you can kid. relax. You can't when, ignore one. No, because they'll just keep to. going at you. Like whereas. If you tell one of your friends to piss off and come back tomorrow, they'll piss off and come back tomorrow. You tell a kid to do that, they'll turn around and come back 30 seconds later and say, can't ask you the exactly the same question. It's just... I always feel like when you get to know, uh, especially boy kids, when you get to know them a little bit and they get comfortable, man, they get really chatty. Yeah. And then they start getting quite rough with you too. They'll, they'll punch yeah. you in the stomach every now and then. Yeah. And man, a punch in the stomach from a kid that's that height. It will still win me, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they're and quite I, intense. And then I end up like standing like this around them because I don't know when the, the hook's going to come. Yeah. yeah. It's like, no. I couldn't deal with that every day. Yeah, no, I'm not big on them. So I'll, I'll leave them to someone else to have and someone else to look after and I'll just sort of wave and carry on. Uh, that's, an, that's another thing. Like I wonder whether that comes from, my because my upbringing is... Uh, you know, the family, the extended family in Indonesia, they all have maids that cost maybe back in the day it was probably like two bucks a week or something to yeah. have a maid. So they've got like five each yeah. per, per household. Um, they don't do anything. Yeah. They don't look after their own kids. No. They don't well, cook anything. Easier, they, don't, yeah. they don't clean. They don't cook. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? It's just like... Yeah, yeah no. I, I, I just 100%. It's... I think life is a lot easier these days as well, though. And life is easier these days? Oh, 100%. Well, it depends. Easier or harder. I mean, I think... We've, we've made life very easy for ourselves, but also in making life easier for ourselves, we've also made it harder for ourselves. It's I think there's too many options, bro. Like, I think, you know, you give people too many options and that's what's happened. We've had... Um, I will agree with that because I have mental meltdowns trying to decide on dinner most weekends because... I jump on menu right. log and I've got 50,000 options and I'm like, right, man, I just need like a Thai restaurant or some nice Japanese or a nice pizza or something. But just I'm presented with thing. like 400 different Thai options and I'm like, well, which one do I go to? Like, yeah. And it's, a, and it's a problem. It's a problem. Like, I mean, if you think about it, um, I'll waste an hour thinking about it. I mean, I'm so starving. I usually end up getting something really bad because then I end up hungry and desperate for food. It's just, yeah. But it's, it's bang on. It's, it's, like you said, it's not just with food. It's with everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when, when we were in high school, it was like you come out and there's maybe four cho choices. Yeah. Whereas now it's like maybe there's more. Yeah. But people are not ready yet to take on more. It, no, it, we it, can't. It, we don't need as much choice as we've got. We seem to think we want the choice, but we don't need it. No, and it's like, it, it's just, it makes, I feel like it makes it worse. If you go to a small town, any small town, why is it so much nicer than a big city? And when you start to think about it, it's because there's less choices. Yeah. There's just the one school. There's the one fish and, and the, chip shop. And you, right. There's right. the one dairy, there's the one this, there's the one that, and you got no And choice. there's still people working, Justin. There's still people like crafting a bit yep. of a wooden duck or something, right? Yep. yep. And they're selling it at the market on the weekend. Yep. And that's what's nice about it is like everyone's got their own little pocket. Everyone's responsible. And there's not too many choices. There's not like five Thai places at Randwick, the spot. Do you know what I mean? Which is like... Yeah, it's a step back. It's... Yeah. It's, it's actually our step forward. Like I, I think that the only way forward is to, for, and I've said it on the podcast before, like stop fucking copying. You know what I mean? What happens in the city is like everyone's jumping on the bandwagon and then it's oversaturated. Oh, you, you see it with like, I think it was American Burgers would have raged about two years ago. 50,000 burger places started up. And none uh, of them got it right. No, none of them really got it right. Because and, as if you're going to be able to get it right overnight. There's, and then you got, I don't know what the fad food is at the moment, but it seems to happen in Sydney. I mean, you'll get all 50 the of these little places and they're all the same. Well, they're not the same. They're similar but different. It's like... And they're not even as good as what I'm getting at. It's kind of no. like, you know... I mean, you, you go to the really old 
burger shop that's in the back corner that's been operating for 50 years and it's still the boss because the guy's been making burgers for 50 years and but that's the thing it's it's this imitation culture you know like you you do the american burger thing and everyone here is doing the american burger thing even some of my mates are doing the american burger thing but then you go to the states and you have a burger and you're like oh my god yeah we why are we even trying here 100 percent. it's just like you're not even selling what they're selling no but you're selling the culture but you you're selling the idea is it the yeah idea? but it's like it's so uh it's almost a dream to what's that word it's so it's so chinese whispers because it's like someone just it's like another country culture just taking your culture and then just running with it and not yeah. really knowing well it's like chinese food i mean the first time you actually go to asia and have proper chinese food and you're like i know right that the first definitely. time i had thai food in thailand I was already like, there's no fucking way it's going to be as good as Thai in Sydney because Sydney's got the best ingredients in the planet, right? Yep. There's no way. The first time I had like just the first dish was just like stir fried veggies. Yep. And the first bite into a string bean was the crunchiest string bean I've had in my entire life. It, yep. You could snap it like a pencil. Oh, 100%. I was like, man, how come their vegetables are, it's the technique, right? Yeah. They it's, know what they, they, they've, just mastered the art of cooking it that's all they've done they know right. what they're doing it's not, as you said it's the chinese whispers thing otherwise it's the person who's come over they've learned from their parents they've learned from their parents you know what we can actually do this well you can't really do it you um and I'm they so usually you, have to water down or change what the original was to suit to suit the I culture hate that fusion you know that's the thing it's like you go to japan there's the um sashimi restaurant yeah. there's the sushi restaurant there's the you know the 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 katsu yep. restaurant and that's all they do is katsu everything katsu yep. every type of meat or vegetable but yep. they don't do udon there no because they, that's, they're that's, no that's, good that's at it in the ramen house and you go to a japanese restaurant in sydney and it's got every fucking japanese food on the one menu yep or even worse you go to a asian restaurant and it's got fur and thai and chinese and oh my you god just it's know like it's Malaysian all going to be like... average and it's all going to taste the same and it's like so now we've got some form of generic <laughs> asian cuisine it's pretty much the only way to describe it like it's right it's been massacred like like you can't you can't have um like a restaurant that just does fur no and and then you have one that has fur out of one of a hundred noodle dishes you just know that that broth is not going to be the no. same as the one that's just cooking one. for yeah. all day in that vat it, it, it's just oh man recently i was in the city and lunchtime same shit lunchtime everyone comes down from all the office buildings yep and um there's some authentic food around some of these funky sort of oh, hipster a style few... food yeah but no the busiest one with the queue of people was the noodle shop which had a hundred different types of noodle of every asian culture and uh yeah you know just be word of mouth and someone's told someone that this is the best tasting one they actually don't know what good food is and then they, number 88 number yeah. <laughs> number and then they will just keep repeating it and <laughs> they won't try anything else or do anything else and that's until someone else tells them that this this is the new hip one where you've got to go there and it's it's interesting isn't it it's like i was just watching people queuing up for that noodle joint and then seeing the vietnamese fur place with no queue out the front of theirs i'm thinking whoa whoa there's something wrong with this but whatever yeah you know yeah i'm quite i'm quite happy sometimes i look at a restaurant it's empty it's like is it bad or is it just untested and sometimes you just got to go in there give it a try next thing you know if sometimes you're the one who goes in there and tries and as soon as you sit in there someone else is someone brave else and else comes, comes in. in next thing you know five or six people come in it's it's a tough one isn't it like I, I i do see that a lot when i was living in in and around the city you'd see a restaurant that would do particularly well yep and then you'd see the restaurant next door to them with nobody in it yep and i never thought about the people in the restaurant i always thought about the people in in the restaurant that had nobody in it yeah like i personally wouldn't stand for that like if that was my restaurant and next door was just like pumping every night i would do something oh 100 percent. like what is wrong with people what is wrong with what is what, what's what's with people being so precious about shit that nothing changes or they don't progress it's like it, surely it's time for you to change it up or fold up because this next door's doing well and you're 
Oh, you know. I see so many businesses like that in Sydney, though, and I'm, I wonder myself how you actually open it. It's like so many coffee shops because I oh, work around yeah. um, St. Leonard's Crow's Nest. Yeah. I see hundreds of coffee shops and I hardly see anyone goes to them in a day. And it's like, well, it's like Jono. We, what do you actually do? It? Like, literally, how, John, how can you stay in business when I see 10 customers buy a coffee off you? Because it's become like, because the business was their passion. Yeah. So Jono was trying to uh, explain from Black Betty Cafe, he was trying to explain to me that uh, when I first met him in the cafe, it doesn't, it's not about the money. This is about, this is what I want to do. And yeah. I love coffee, love coffee culture. And I'm like, but that's not a business. No, love doesn't make you money, unfortunately, as well. Like, I don't think you it's can... It's good to have a passion and love what you do, but you need to be smart about it as well. And Well, that's especially service-based. Yeah. Like, if you're... I, I believe the the most truest form of business is a service-based business, in my opinion. Yep. And I don't think I'd run a service-based business. And that's probably why I get away with freedoms in life. Do you know yep. what I mean? Like, if you're running a service, as soon as you drop the ball, oh, 100%. bad service. And then yep. you're, you're, you're screwed. So... I think because of that, it's essential that you make money. Yep. It's that burn thing. You can get burnt quite badly, quite quickly in that sort of service food industry as well. Um, Man, I, I don't believe those... Um, and it's where those rating sites and That's Facebook what I was about to say, and, those and rating whatnot, sites. They can kill you. And, well, your, your competitors could just all hop on and write bad reviews about your food yep. and that's enough to turn some 100%. people away. So. I mean that's a nasty that's a nasty world we're living in now. Like I, I just think like it's. I find it sad as well when people give a place a bad review over something pathetic as well. Like the food may have been amazing. The napkins the, were too cheap. cheap. Yeah, the na- <laughs> it's literally pathetic stuff like that though. Yeah. Like yeah, it is. And they'll give them a one star and it'll bring their entire rating down. Yeah. But they actually found the meal great. They enjoyed yeah. the food. It was the fact that they didn't have the right beer or, as you said, the napkins or the girl knocked a glass of water over or something or we yeah. didn't feel the service was that great. But you, did you enjoy the meal? Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah, you can, you can destroy someone so quickly with the internet these days. I mean, people that are commenting like that also know that when you go to Macca's and you have their fries, sometimes they're fucking amazing and sometimes they're just soggy and shit. Yeah. I mean, even... Macca's, which has like the most probably refined, well thought out, money making, consistent system to date. Macca's can be shocking sometimes and great other times. I know, but it's like them of all businesses have yep. the tightest run. Yeah, sure. Do you know what I mean? Like they they they're global, and yep. a cheeseburger is pretty much cheeseburger everywhere, and no other company has done that. No, but even they fuck up on a daily basis. Yeah. It's like human error. So how can you be so hard on a review on a restaurant if the staff was rude to you? Because they could just be having a bad day. That's my opinion. That's oh no, my, I, I agree with you, you on know. that. And I think we're quite sometimes we're quite quick to give judgment, but we don't take it back nearly as well as we give it. And like you get a hair in the food. Like, what's the big fucking deal? Like, honestly, it's a, an accident. It wasn't done it's maliciously. Not, yeah. And we're just so quick to stab so, or, yeah, right. or destroy over that. And Even if an insect made it in, it's not like they planted it there. No. They would never have wanted to. It's just somehow shit happens. Yeah. But and, it, yeah, yeah. and it's the sad thing is that the people, more people will jump on the bad message when it's put on Facebook than will jump on the positive message. So if two people go to the same restaurant, one of them writes, oh, I had the most amazing meal, and one writes... I had an absolutely shocking experience. I get bet the one with the amazing meal gets 20 shares and the one with the shocking experience gets 500 shares. Right. And ends up on a current affair or something. So. Well, that's the thing with YouTube, right? Like YouTube is so uh, into when someone does something wrong, Yeah. it's amazing how many people will steal a copyrighted bit of content and just upload it again and yeah, again, again and, and again. again. And then it gets turned into a GIF and then it gets turned into a meme. I mean, it just and, gets And it destroys and careers, whereas... Like once upon a time, like we talked about before, once upon a time you'd you'd be in the newspaper one day, the next day the paper would be Gone. no longer purchasable. Yeah. Whereas it's over, it's disappeared, we're on to the next scandal or whatnot. Right. Whereas the internet is this place that doesn't forget, can bring things up like a flare. Oh, like 100%. bring it bring it back up. Like I, it can destroy careers too because of that extended period of time, because everyone will see it. So there's this um, comedian who 
was stealing other comedians' jokes, which apparently in comedian circles, it's the lowest of the low because yeah. when you're a comedian that's made it and there's a lot of money in it when you're doing arenas. Yeah. You know, and when and you go and see the small time people doing it and you're stealing their jokes, then it's like they they consider it in their circles much worse than to say graphic designers ripping each other off or well you're essentially other, other industries. killing that person's chance to actually make it because you're stealing their content and giving it out mm. yourself so they're never going to get the chance to because you're stealing from them and putting it out to your big audience your big right. audience isn't going to want to hear it from the little guy anymore because they've already heard it right you're, and, you're, and because you're, you're big you're getting away with it but yeah these people have lost their massive arena shows and stuff because of YouTube. Yeah. Like YouTube has single-handedly um, created a whole lot of people that have put so much time and effort that they've gone through and found footage of the original jokes from the past. Yep. And then put them up against yep. new footage. That's a lot of work, bro. Like someone editing these videos to call someone out and then more and more people jump on the bandwagon and find more jokes. And that person like just they're gone yeah gone. and i found two comedians that did it and they're both gone gone destroyed that's the end of you destroyed to the point where if you are that person there's still people like me finding out about it years later yeah and you're still fucked oh 100 you're still hiding you're still hiding from the world i mean lance armstrong fantastic i'm watching his podcast i'm watching him on podcast and he's so sick of it that if you ask him about the drugs he almost doesn't want to talk about it, but dude, it's the only thing we can talk about because it's the biggest it, thing you've done. Yeah, it's what the Oprah he's, show. And it doesn't all. matter about his seven titles anymore. No one remembers the. Who cares uh, what you're doing now? No one mm, even cares if you get no. him on the show. What are you going to talk about? Tiger Woods, it's the same thing. Right. Greatest golfer <laughs> in the entire world. Anyone care about that? No. Everyone, all people care about is the fact that he was womanizing and um, his ex wife smashed his and windscreen not, with a golf club. It's not fair, too, right? Because I, I watched. Um, Tiger Woods is like top 10 best shots and my god the number one oh, was he's like amazing. Uh, no matter who watches that footage it's just unreal like yeah. what he did but it's like yeah it's it's his, it's, it's his the, it's whole lens, reputation it's is now by like yeah people, people you're don't, very good at golf forgive. but, but people, people people always remember what you did worse rather than what you did good and it's that whole, everyone remembers the bad thing he did. They all know the good thing, but it's the bad memory is the one that pops up most Maybe it's him. not nasty. And I, I, I like to think that it's nastier now than ever, but maybe it's, maybe it was just as nasty back then. Because if you look at Lance, the way he came out was the biggest possible way he could have come out. Yeah. Which is the Oprah Winfrey show. Yeah. And she destroyed him. I yeah. mean, why did he do that? Like it was probably... These days, it would have just come out by someone making a YouTube clip. It, you wouldn't have, he wouldn't have done what he did back then today. No, he, he probably would have put it out in his own form these days or as just, well. Yeah, or why would you make a show on Oprah about it? Like, that's a surefire way. It's right. But he's, oh. he's gone. Like, he's gone. Like, I'm trying to watch his new shit. Like, he, he interviews a porn star in his latest podcast, and she's interesting. But I just don't find... But that's the thing. I don't think he was ever that interesting. He just rode bike. Like, no, no insults to oh, a cyclist. He, he was... But it's like... See, he wrote... A, the problem with him is that he wrote a book. And I, wrote, I read the book. And the whole thing was that he lost a testicle and he could still win. And so yeah. when I read that, it was one of the most motivating... Because yeah. I don't read. But I was into cycling, so I read it. And then to find out afterwards... I knew he was cheating, but then to really find out like that and with the bandwagon of everyone hating on him, yeah, I lost the hero. Like I yeah. still have respect for him in some weird way, but I definitely don't want to be him. No. Like I couldn't live with it. No. You know what I mean? Like, like, like. And America is very interesting in the way that they uphold their sporting heroes or their heroes. They're... Man. Yeah, it's an interesting society and culture in the way that they look after their sports stars and their heroes. You just look at what they can get away with or what they can do because they're so rich. Or yeah. It, yeah. They're, they're almost gods, some sports heroes in America, and he had reached almost godlike status to some people. Yeah. He did have almost a cult of personality around him. Um, people thought he was invincible. Um, 
he did do a lot of good and he motivated a lot of cancer people, which was really, really good. But it's just sad, the wash up and how it ended. Um, yeah. Look, if, I don't know. I think you make a... I think it's not so much that he did something bad. It's just that he did something bad and then cashed in on top of that. Yeah. I, I think that's where it gets... Yeah, people don't forgive, man. Like, I, I know that I do I think some shit, but I, I don't think I've done anything that bad, you know? On, I, think, I think it was malicious. Yeah, I think he was that's a little a bit hypocr- hypocr- hypocritical as well, and that also didn't help him. He came down quite hard on the others who had been Correct. done for do- doping before I mean. him, um, Mr. Landis Floyd, who was the one who ended up knocking him in. And he, yeah, he, right. I remember he came down very hard and... I'd never do this, blah, 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 blah. Well, the lies are the worst. And that's the yeah. worst thing. At that stage, you should have, yep, I'm out. Cool. I'm, game's over. Show's up. Time's up. I've got a freaking... It's, it's almost like um, when you're shunned like that from society. And this is, this is what I'm saying. Now it's not even a situation where people are having to go on the Oprah show to do it. It's been done for you. Some yep. fucker on YouTube has just gone and destroyed your entire career. And it's quite hard because... And some, some people, if you tell yourself something often enough, you actually start to believe it. So I think he believed he wasn't a cheat. I don't think he yeah. ever thought he... I don't well, think he thought he everybody thought, else was cheating, so... I think he thought all yeah. I'm doing is being as competitive as I can to get the win, and that's all he was... See, and this is why I feel like I've lost... Like, I, I am definitely into the idea of Lance Armstrong. Yeah. But I think over time now, you can't deny that the guy is a fucking cheat. And yep. this is the thing, like maybe, you know, they say once a cheat, always a cheat. I know people can change, but cheating is pretty hurtful in yep. general. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? Like um, it's built on, it's built on disrespect. Yeah. So it's really hard to respect someone that's invested in disrespecting others. Um, I'm trying to think of the guy who's the sprinter who bit Usain Bolt in the last 100 meter race this year. But because he had been done for steroids twice before, even though he served his time, he beat him in the fi- final race that Usain Bolt ran, but no one gave him respect because they're like, mate, you've cheated before, you've cheated again. Hey, you may be clean this time. Yeah, I, never, no one, I never heard about him at all. I never even heard about this. No, so, one, yeah. no, one, no one trusted him. No, yeah. one, no one respected him. No yeah. one cared that he had beaten Bolt because they were like, mate, you've been cheating before. Well, that's, that's probably worse than anything then. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, would, hate to, I would hate to wake up every morning and find... That not only is it hard for me to push my business, I've I've got all this extra pressure against me because of shit that I've done in the past. Like, yeah. man, like if that doesn't teach you a lesson, I mean, at the same time, you you know, I'm sitting here running a podcast, telling people to take risks and push themselves. I mean, next thing you know, you've done a really fucking stupid thing, and people don't forget give you for it. That would be even worse. Yeah, and this, this is what I feel like. Half the time, people aren't taking the risk. No, there's risk taking. Again, it's that whole culture thing of fear. Um, I think you got to cheat a little bit. Like I, I just think there's there's things that like you know, um, even with Zen, like when we we've been running car meets and stuff for so long now, every sticker that we sell, you're getting a five dollar note, right? Yep. I'm like shove it in the pocket, Rob. He's like, no fucking way. We'll get done or whatever. And he's got three daughters, so we're doing everything legit by the book. Yep. But then, you know, I've got other people in other businesses saying to me, you're fucking mad. Oh, 100%. If you're at a meet and you're making all that money, like cash in hand, just even at the shop, just fucking shove it down your pocket. That's it. Don't put it through the bookwork. You get, I mean, no wonder we're not making money. But at the same time, it's like, hey, I'm glad I'm not in charge of that money shit. But, you know, something about it doesn't feel right. Like, I, I, I've always cheated to a degree. Like, I've always... You know, um, if I my first job, I've always gone on the network and stolen their stationery, so I know how to do my. Yeah, is it is it cheating or is it just taking and, advantage or making the most of the situation that you're it's in? It's cheating. At times? It's cheating. It's like it's like working at Macca's and every now and then you take home a bag of chocolate sauce, and it's like it's cheating. It's stealing. It's it, cheating it the is. system, but. It is. It yeah. is. But you've got to do that to a degree. I'm saying. Yeah. You've got. I think it's pushing the rules. It's not so much cheating. It's pushing, trying to pushing the limits or pushing the boundaries to find out just how far you can push things before you get busted or caught. And it's I, human nature. We love to push limits and push boundaries. It's, 
I did the same thing with my parents all the time. Like they tell you to be home at eleven, so you come home at eleven oh five just to see if you can push it that right. little bit. It's this whole it, loophole it, thing. It's working. Like, well, the I came home at eleven. You told me eleven last week, but I came home at eleven oh five. I'm home at eleven thirty. You didn't punish me last week, so how can you punish me this week? You know what I mean? Like yeah. setting that whole expectation or um, precedent, and once you've done it once, you know you can sort of get away with it, and you get more confident. And one thing, and then it snowballs and yeah you're into it that's right so but talking about being into stuff like i i personally haven't been crazy about cars as much as i had when i was modifying uh like a car a year yeah but you're you've been pretty consistently into motorsport which i love motorsport i, oh, know, no, I, I want to talk about that because it's like when i watch motorsport now i fall asleep like on the t- tv yeah because it's something about like um, the repetition of too many laps, like especially Formula One. If you're going watching cars go round and round, I end up like. If one can be good and bad, I ha- think. How do I, you stay awake for the whole? Like, are you watching it intensely? I don't know if I. Why? I love motorsport. But I don't love just the racing. It's all of the everything else that goes into motorsport I that, that I really F1. love. The the story, the, the, the politics, story, the politics, the, the design, the people behind it. Who's going to drive here? Who's going to drive there? The What's drama. going on in the background? Who are they trying to wedge out of this seat? What technology have they come up with? What sort of mm. political drama? That's what I really love. If you want to watch good racing, IndyCar's where you go. Um, in my opinion, it's the best racing series in the world for out and out racing. And uh, why, why, why is that? The, the, cars the, ra- are more, the racing they're, they're more, is close. The drivers yeah, have so big, it's more like controlled cars. Yeah. Well, the cars are spec, and this year they've made a car that looks, in my opinion, freaking sexy. Mm. Um, they're designed to race very, very close, and the mm. drivers actually have pretty big nuts. They race on ovals. They're doing 350 kilometers an hour, and they're going side by side into corners without lifting. Yeah, and they're in huge packs. To me, it's exciting. Like well, one, one, one little mistake, and you're taking out three or four people. But th- th- that's what I've always wanted about um, NASCAR, especially. Like if you're doing 300 laps, and NASCAR, I, I struggle to enjoy. NASCAR's become NASCAR's had a lot of problems, and they've become very, very fake in how they do their racing to the point now that they actually stop the race three times during the race, bring out the safety car, repack the field, and start That's the race again. Just to get certain people to, to be well, it's to ensure up that. To the front. Well, it's basically to ensure that they've always got close racing because what happens is obviously it spreads out. I mean, you get 300 laps of boredom. They're yeah. like, instead of that, let's do three 100 lap sprint races, basically. I get you, job. break it off. Well, that, that's almost like at least sounds more it, interesting to me, but it, it, it's like I don't get the concept of doing 300 laps and then having someone take you out on the last corner and just... Yeah. I, I don't get that. It's like when someone... I remember doing um, go-karts with the boys and fuck, they were serious, dead serious, you know? Yep. One guy even bought a back protector and shit. Like, <laughs> you know what it's like, end of the year, all the boys from the workshop and stuff like that. Yeah. I remember at Eastern Creek, it's one of those situations where you race all day so that you figure out where you stand in the grid. Yep. And I was second in the grid at the end of the day. So I'm like, man, I've worked fucking hard for this. Yep. First corner, bro. First yep. corner, old mate Stevie just hits me, uses me as brakes, and I'm, I'm gone. Yep. But I did the whole work all day. It's not fair. I no. just hate, I hate, I no, hate that. I understand. And I get annoyed when my favorite drivers are taken out by... That's what I mean. Well, How can pay you be... drivers, in my opinion, in like Hendy or in Formula One, um, it. I I just love watching racing. I just. Why are these races so long though? Why do you have to have so many fucking laps in F one? One TV rights. They need to broadcast for two hours. They've got a contract. They need to provide two hours worth of racing. It's... It is good to have motorsport on TV all day. I do yeah. like that about Australia. But I like watching the F one. I like the Indy. But then again, I like participating in motorsport as well. I like doing my hill climbs with, or doing the track days like we did. I don't do enough of them. I know. And I think my, I think more people should get into it. More people shouldn't stress about what their car is, and they should just go out and actually have a bit of fun. Like the most fun track days we've ever done is the ones like when we went to Wakefield Park with myself. You had your MX5. Yeah. There was Taz with his little Corolla. Yeah. I mean, Taz is probably the person I've done the most racing with, and me and him have spent bugger all on our cars and we have so much fun you can even just rent a corolla or something i've done that before and yeah. with um 
this guy Mark who used to just rent a car all the time. Yeah. And an Astro, that'll do. Yeah. Good fun, you know? Yeah, just fun. That's what me and him get out of it and just love going to track and just having a bit of fun. But this is the thing, like I think all of that is all the all the more sketchy stuff is dying. Like everyone did sketchy stuff like riding bicycles, mountain biking, and you know, it's all pretty hairy out there. Yeah. But it's almost like that kind of stuff was commonplace. Yep. And everyone had access to it. Whereas now it's almost like you've got to do something as extreme as walking on climbing up a building with no ropes. And that's overtaken general, just everyday gnarliness. I think it, you know, it's like, become again it's that safety Sam attitude and like I because I know, I know we've safe sure and we've made home. everything so safe to actually find something that gives you a thrill or gives you a rest these days. You've got to do something pretty extreme and out there because we've been brought up through the 90s and the early 2000s. We've watched the likes of Travis Pastrana and whatnot do so many crazy, nutty things. Mm. I think the limits for humans, we've, it's hard to describe, but we've almost created this limit that's so far out there that we're always looking for that next most extreme or crazy. Like you see someone do a backflip on a mountain bike these days, and you're like, oh, just a backflip. Is that all? Like, I know, right? It's just 20 years ago, mm. I remember when Pastrana did the first one at X Games, I lost my mind. Yeah. My face melted, and I was like, someone's backflipped a BMX or a bike, and they've landed it? Mm. These days, it's... Mm, okay. Well, that's what I mean. It's almost like it's so extreme that people give up before they even start. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like uh, sometimes it's I'm... It's like I, unreachable. I, you know. And that's what I find... Think, that's what makes me a little bit sad about track days, though, is people get so worried that their car's not going to be up to spec, that well, they're going to need like a semi, car yeah, next yeah, thing, you know? Yeah, you need, oh, I'm going to need all this aero, I'm going to need all of these. No, you don't. You just need to grab your helmet, come down and actually have some fun and yeah. get into it and actually... Well, that's the thing, right? When you start going, you realise... I'm having so much fun, but I'm not, I'm not able to break because my brakes are fading. Next thing you know, you got the bug, right? Yeah. And this is, this is the thing. It's like when you truly get the bug is what people, I find people are lacking is that That's, finding that thing that, you're really that you really can apply yourself to. Yeah. You know, like I keep bringing up Stephen from the um, previous podcast, but just I've known this guy for a few years, but I've never seen him like that i've yep. never seen him that excited and that like because he started to understand he's got the, the importance of he's his brand he uh, started to listen to me and understand that why would um i put this on everyone's t-shirts to wear if other designers are walking down the street looking at this t-shirt going oh god those letters are a bit far apart you know what i mean like yep. it, it's like he understood that it's not about the likes it's about the genuine foundation the passion has you know, been ignited gonna... within him and he's driven to now do what he wants to do. He's found what he wants to do and he's driven to do it. And, and like, now, now he's like, he's gotten over that fear of where do I start? And now it's kind of like start with the building blocks. Yep. I'm like, right, let's write a manifesto. Yep. To fuck a business plan. Yeah. That's old school, boring yep. shit. Mm -hmm. Write a manifesto that, and I'm like, print when you do do it, like I'll help him with it. But I like when, when we get there, yep. you're printing it out. Even if you don't have a printer, you're going to go out to the post office and buy a $40 printer. Yep. You're going to print it out in like 15, 16 point and you're going to sticky tape it to your wall and live with it for a bit. Yep. You know, like I'm going to force them to do this. If I'm going to do this for you, you're going to do that. I even say that to the, some of the clients that I work with, like here are some rough logos, but print them out. Don't just look at it now on your shitty monitor and just decide, yep. yeah. Print it out and live with it for a bit. Well, actually, you know? do, don't just... It's the whole horse to water. You've got to take it there, but then they've actually got to drink the water themselves and involve themselves. Like, you can help people... And they people. do. They, they dive right in, man. When yep. they start to understand, when That's people when start people, to understand, like... You can um, see, though, like... I'm happy to help people who, once you help them, they get into it. Mm. But what I don't like doing is helping someone repetitively and then they still don't start Man. engaging or doing it themselves. Yeah. And it's like... Yeah, I know some really sweet people that I love helping because they are genuinely good people. Yeah. But, man, these people can't help themselves sometimes, you know what and I mean? I think you've got to find that internal passion. At, at some stage, you've got to want to do it yourself. Or well, you've got to be able to do it yourself. I think, okay, yes, you can ask for help on this and that, 
But I think worst comes to worst, I'm still of the attitude that you, you, you still have to be. Because once upon a time, that person who crafted the wooden duck, they just fucking figured it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, sure, collaborating with people gets you more and more out there. But I like to think that... You've got to be able to do it. the person that I was relying on dies, I'm fine. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't like the concept of having to rely on somebody else in order to make the final product. No, like, 100%. You may be outsourcing the final product, but initially you want to be able to create it yourself so that you know what mm. you're going to be selling going forward. So, Well, I, I think it just creates that confidence that you need yep. to succeed. You know what I mean? Like I, I see so many, this is what I'm saying to Stephen and everyone. It's like so many people have just whipped something up and then they're running with it. Yep. And it's kind of like... But I think you see so many of those things that are just quickly ripped up. They... They, they come and they go as fast as they 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 don't last well, because there's no passion, enthusiasm, right. or we talked actual about it creative We've... content. Or, there's just nothing actually behind it. It's just you're buying fluff. Well, this is the thing. It's like. Um... Everything that we've known that was successful starts to die when they start to sell out, like yep. YouTube with ads or Foxtel with ads or Netflix yep. with ads or you know what I mean. They get you on the bandwagon early, yep. and then over time. It just deteriorates. Yep. You know? well, I think with the internet and everything, though, everyone, when you get into something or some things, you, it gives you the ability to dig more into things as well. And once well, you yeah, start once digging you... into things, sometimes mm. you begin to realize what is this something, maybe I am actually quite interested in this because now I've done a little bit more research on it, or I'm maybe I'm that, not, yeah. or not so much interested in it. I think the internet re has really opened that up and given us. A lot more knowledge um, that maybe we previously hadn't had, and it's made it a lot more easily accessible. Whereas previously, you might have had to go to the library, or you know, research was quite intense. These days, everything's at our fingertips. So, I, I just feel like we've lost, um, like, yeah, sure, we've got more, so many choices that we're confused now, but it's like we've lost, we've lost choices at the same time. So, it's almost like uh, when I was growing up around Sydney, every suburb had at least one little hardware store. Yep. And it was always run by a really old Greek dude or something. Yep, yeah. Just, you know, you walk in, it's dark. And oh, it's I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. You know, and it was awesome. It had a certain smell and, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Um, and then, you know, you have Bunnings, right? And it's the same with the toy shops, right? There used to be small toy shops. Yep. But then all of a sudden there was just one toy shop. Yep. And it's like, yes, we have more choices, but we've got the choices are within the one shop. Yep. As opposed to culture. And then... It's soulless is the way I feel. Like when I just, you used to go to those old sh stores, the person you would speak to, you'd get to know them. Right. They would get to it's know you. It's a small you. town thing. It's a small town thing. That oh, vibe. you're coming back. Oh, you bought those screws from me last week. How'd you get on with that task? What did you do? How'd that go? Whereas you go into Bunnings, you're just another number. It's just... That's, a, that's what I'm saying. So these big companies, it's not surprising when they go down because there was never an ethos to begin with. There was never any culture to no, begin was, with. So the whole business was only ever set up with one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to right. make money. There was never right, so when they chuck the ads in, so people just go, look for an ad blocker or something like for yeah. YouTube. But they, yep. they don't hop off the bandwagon. They don't sit there and remember about how sad it is that like there used to be these beautiful little hardware stores and now there's only Bunnings. No. But I don't know if they're happy about it or what. I still can't gauge people like i can't gauge whether people are happy that they can just go to bunnings now or whether they would prefer to have that old romanticism of having a cute little shop that maybe they fucking hate that maybe people today are so fucking hardcore i the last thing i want is that old fucker in the hardware store to talk to me for 10 minutes my god i just want to go in get that shit not have to check prices and just walk out i think it comes down to everyone's different and people are looking for different experiences and also some people don't know what they missed. Some people have never been to the small store. They've never true. been to it. They've never had that experience. True, a true, lot true, of people true. these days have only ever been brought up with the big brand warehouses. They've that, never been to a library. They've, they've never... never uh, I come from small town New Zealand. We had one supermarket. Back in the day, it was like you rent to your local dairy on the corner and got most things. Like, right. Uh, it's interesting, library isn't it? Because I, I, it said I, I don't think some, 
some people in their twenties they they probably never seen some of the things. It's just the age. We used to have milk delivery. Well, that's we same as have... in New Zealand. We used to get the glass bottles and used to put the bottles yeah. out with the tokens. Uh, we used to have that. Like in Kensington, we had milk. Man, people wouldn't trust. Yep. Having someone could spike your milk or I mean, just you know, yep. like I, I mean, people are poisoning dogs and shit these days. Yeah. Like what the. Fuck. I remember the milkman. Yeah, and you used to leave the milk bottles and freaking comes around. Just, just uh, ah, I just, I, I don't know. I just think, I just don't, un- I just really don't understand. Like when I did that little racism piece the other day, like I don't really don't understand how the, the violence was there back then because it was like Asians out spray painted, yep. massive. So it, it was scary, you know, people were robbing houses and people were getting beaten up just as, just as they are now. But we weren't scared of. It like, wasn't it. But were you told about it as often? Was it in your faces? Well, often? that's right. Maybe the media, that's, it's yeah. the thing. It wasn't sensationalized because no, it was, we, like you said, we only had the, the, the news at night at one time, not yep. like all day like we do all now. All day. Right. And, and we didn't have it. And if you missed it, too bad. You fucking missed it. Yeah. Like the, you're you not didn't gonna... hear about it. And it would be someone might say to you, hey, did you hear that there's been this attack on someone in, in that part of town? And you'd be like, oh, yeah. okay. We'll, we'll read about that in the paper. It doesn't even come in the paper and we're on to the And news. news was news back then. It wasn't yeah. like oh, allegedly this, apparently this, supposedly this. Yeah. Like literally news was news back then. It was, it was proper news. And these days everything is sensationalized. Every story is... Teddy bear's picnic. Yeah. Well, and, lifestyle, lifestyle stories. It's basically a current affair. Yeah. But it's like an news. attack, which might be one punch. Some two dudes go at it after a pub. You know, they've had a hissy. Yeah. That's all of a sudden sensationalized into something so much more there's than an agenda, a agenda. There's an and agenda. There's, yeah. It was 50 boys going at it, and, you know, big rumble in a pub. It's two dudes standing in the corner having a fight because one of them right. bit the it's other whatever one. Whatever sells the headlines and like, newspapers have been doing yeah. it forever as well. Like just, just shit headlines that like uh, click title bait. Oh, 100%. Like, it's just like YouTube using it now, that kind yeah. of. Saying something in a title to, or putting something, a chick in the it's, thumbnail. It's, it's even reading like the SMH and whatnot. You're going, you bring up the website and half the articles are paid content now. Yeah, yeah, Advertise yeah. a story and whatnot. Yeah. And it's like, what's really news and what's not? Yeah, I learned a lot of that really early on. Like in 2001, I was featured in Sydney Morning Herald and they came over to interview us about our successes, but then they turned the whole story around and made us look like thieves. Yeah. Um, and I think this is commonplace, man. Like I worked for a PR company uh, at that time as well. And it's amazing how much stuff comes across as an article. Yep. That was paid. Yep. So I didn't know that kind of stuff until I, I started working. And then when I saw it, I was like, wow. Yeah. You know, just nasty. And those people, um, they, they laugh about it at work. Yep. They have belly laughter about it. It's like a funny thing yep. for them. The creative writing basically yeah 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 i'm just not yeah creative writing it's news not creative writing creative writing goes in the fiction section i just remembered like it's all like even with the web designing stuff like it's amazing how people will jump on the bandwagon just to like you said make money right and yep. so all these people were creating um businesses which uh you would finish your website and then you would run your website through these people. Uh, what, what, what are they called? Like test groups, you know? Yep. And they would like watch over old ladies running through your website. And they go, ah, well, Justin, they found your website a bit confusing. Some ladies found the right navigation confusing. Maybe you should move it over to the left. And this is what happened. Our creativity was once upon a time, you'd make a website, you move your mouse left, and maybe the website goes right. Yeah. Maybe I made I made a website for a client that scrolled horizontally. Yeah. So the graphic was just in t- nested tables yep. forever. The browser you'd scroll that way, but you'd never get away with that shit today. Yeah. Because the website has to have top nav or left hand nav, and oh, I'm always listening to the marketing team at work talking about it. I'm just sitting there going, "Man, you guys worry about like the most pointless shit." End of the day, people will find what they want to find. But there's no more. Exploration no mo- of the medium. No, it, it, well, that's it, what it I mean. They've got a set sort of template. template that they now know is the working formula for a website, and that's what we've got to do because this is what every other company is doing. And I'm just like, man, this is so boring. Like, but I don't no- even try, Justin. Like, that's a problem. This is, it, it's so thick, this culture of conformity yep. that I don't even try. Like When a client does 
want me to do something, they're already thinking that, yeah, I'm going to get something really rad because I'm working with Justin. But man, I have to tone it down so hard because if I wanted to do it, yeah, like, fuck. I'm It'd just, be out there, yeah. Yeah, right? Yep. No, I can imagine. Right, and, it, and it would work yeah. better. Yep. But they're just, everyone's scared and everyone's like, I don't know, bro, too precious or some shit about their brands. I'm like, you know, whatever. Like yep. e- even with the Zen Graph logo, people are like, oh, it reads Ben, it reads Ben. I'm like, I could easily change the Z to make it more legible and less, but fuck that. Like when you start doing shit for... Once you start listening to one squeaky wheel, you're doomed because oh, you'll saying, never, right? you'll never keep. Yeah, you've. It's good to listen, but it's not always good to act. You've got to listen. Right. It's like you got to. You, you've still got to contain. You got to do you. Own, you got to yeah. do you. Like, 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 like if people are, if people are like unsigning because of one photo that I posted today. Yeah. Out of all the photos I've posted o- over the years, if the, it's just this one photo was enough for them to. To log off for me to be really critical of that and change my ways because of that would ruin me because then you forget why because then you'd find that there's probably thirty thousand other people who like that one photo who have been going to go and turn around and go oh so So he's a pussy now he's right justin's turned into a pussy he's not going to post anything do you you post what you like or do you post what you think others might like and i've never been that guy that's yeah Ooh, I think others will like this, so I'm gonna do this. It's well, like, well, the <laughs> garage would have just been filled with memes from day one. It, it's never has been. It's always been. What kind of a life is that, though? To run a business where you're constantly trying to figure out what your customer likes and what they're gonna want next. Like, what kind of business is it where you serve? I mean, yes, I, yes, service-based businesses are true businesses, but I don't know. No wonder I, why I don't run one. Because yeah. why would I run it? Wanna make this thing that they can't get enough of yeah like it doesn't make sense to me it's like why would i want to dedicate my life to trying to figure out what they're going to want next very hard what a fucking shit job yeah <laughs> i can't think of anything worse because you don't know like you don't know and then you got to try to understand this core market and then they, they yep. get upset with you you know they get upset with you when when they don't get what they what they expected or what Oh, and people, then you, they constantly are, come short because you have to deliver, you have to over deliver, and they're like, they pat you on the back one year. Oh, yep. Justin, you over delivered this year. And then next year, you're like, oh, we've gone to brand B because you guys are, used to be good and now you're shit. And it's not even that, it's, it, it's more that brand B's now coming and sold them some story or something else. And your, your product or service is still just as good. It's just they, see, the, they've been sold. Again, it's the see what happens spin then. or marketing. It's what happens then? If you, if you took off doing a business where you're doing it what you think people are like, like yep. and then someone goes and screws you over, it's almost like you're all not even sure. Like yeah. the people screwing you over, stealing your business, are still not sure of what the people want anyway because... No, yeah, they, they, they don't actually have a clue. And that's the thing, end of the day, they'll probably fail in a few years because they've stolen an idea to make money, but they, they haven't actually come up with anything. And then the, the pressure would be on when that idea or whatnot is... I, I just liked it when cafes were shit cafes, like you said, like a small town thing where you got a, a 24-hour cafe and they serve you eggs on toast with tomato and the tomato is not cooked properly. Yep. They've only just put it on and, they, you know, yeah. and the, the, the bread is toasted to fuck with yellow butter all over it. I'm talking about buttered up to fuck yep. with like a fried egg that doesn't look pretty. It's not poached. Yeah. It's not scrambled with cream. I know. It's, the exact sort it's of a place. fucking And it's fried brought out egg. on a plate that looks like it's been used 50,000 times for cutlery. That's all scratched. And you have the best D&M conversation with someone like at yep. four in the morning or something. Yep. I'm just saying like that. That gold just doesn't, it's so hard to find now. You know oh, what I mean? 100%. Those sort of quirky places. Have, everything's become so um, stale almost. Well, it's like they, 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 out of fear, those places feel like they had to shut down. You know, maybe initially that they lost money because the hipster cafes had a queue. Yeah. And like I said, the guy that refuses to change had those shitty cheap napkins with the tomatoes, the buttered up bread. But my God, it's sad that they've gone. Like, yep. it's sad how 
people don't realize also what they had had until it's gone and then once it's gone they're like like the motor show like we used to have the motor show my dad took me every year because i went we to, to the i think i went to the very last sydney motor show and it's never come again oh, yeah. but isn't it sad it's like people i remember people on the internet when we were pushing the motor show people would say get fucked if i'm gonna pay 50 bucks or whatever to see cars that i can go to a dealership and you know it's like i saw it change i saw this mentality of what have whatever happened to if you're a car guy and they put on a show for you once a year where it's all cars to go in. What happened to the, the like basically something something having to be compulsory to like, oh no, nah, fuck it, I'm just not gonna go. And this is what's happened. It's and like again, I think that's the internet though as well, because well, I can go or I can watch it, look at all the pictures and whatnot on the internet and someone else's vlog. Be, be at home, and be safe and be, be at home, be safe. Someone else's vlog there pretty much. I can vicariously live it through someone else and then maybe they're going to have a better experience than me because they know people at the show or they, you know what I mean? It's, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, like, like participation in school for me was very much forced. You yeah. know, you'd go to a swimming carnival. Who gives a shit if you don't know how to swim? You're fucking getting wet. Oh, hundred percent. You know, you go well, to a no running choice. thing. Yeah. And I, th I thought that was what was good about school. Well, I'm quite happy I got forced to do a whole heap of things at school because I wouldn't have done them otherwise. Well, I just don't feel like people are doing, continuing that. Yeah. Like, I just don't think people are like, um, people are having a go at things, but it's all cloaked under copycatting. Yeah. It's like somebody else has done it, they're giving it a go, and they're just basically doing the same shit that somebody else is doing. They're not adding their own personality because they're maybe uh, not, they're not, confident enough that they have a personality yeah there's no flavor like they're just not confident in in their own like that they they're were, that they're interesting enough like like they i know what you they want to do it but they don't have the confidence to do it but they still want to put it out and they're there. still doing it anyway yeah and they get like they like uh this is yeah it keeps it's coming almost back to like this. a fed thing coming, yeah faker kind of thing it keeps coming back to this you know like i, I, I one instagram post i said like wannabe models or something like that and i got copped heaps of his shit for that but i'm like they're not models like they're just not like heaps of the girls that i shoot are just girls that want to shoot yeah you know they're not models like some of them are starting to say oh, i think i'm a model or something but they're not like they didn't study for it they didn't train for it like yeah. there are models who know how to move yeah and stuff you know and these girls aren't so it's like i'm copying shit for calling it how it is it's just the whole spade is, and that's what I said to you the other day. Is like, I when, when do you become a hater? Like, at what stage does having an opinion make you a hater? Well, I'm not. I and don't think I'm a I've hater got, for saying that. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, don't I, think... I, I say a lot of stuff on the internet, and I've got quite a blatant opinion. And if I don't mm. like something, I'll say it. I mean, I get told I'm a hater, and it's like, well, I'm not yeah. hating. I'm just giving my opinion. Like, yeah, I don't think I'm hating. Like, no. I, I don't think I'm hating by saying want to be hated. I want to be models. Like, no. I, I think I'm just saying it how it is. No, but you're just calling a spade a spade. The, yeah, uh, the girls who want to be models. But I'm being funny about it too. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think humor yeah, but, but takes the edge you're, off. You're surely, you're not saying anything bad about them. It's not yeah. like. Oh, I've got these girls who are dreaming of being model. You know what I mean? Or no, I copped, it, I copped it a bit from that. And it's kind of like, and, I, and I, I copped it a bit. I cop it a bit every time I post a sexy image too. But I'm like, get off it, guys. It's always guys commenting too. I'm like, get off it. I know the shit that you guys check out. And yeah. Like, get off it. Like, what is this bandwagon that you're on right now? Because it's so uncool. Yeah, it's probably because someone's wife's seen him post it well, another comment on the Facebook and you're like, oh, had to oh, oh go and impress her by putting in the clean comment. Oh, I don't think this is a bit risky or something. Okay, like, and it's like, I'm charging for like, uh, for, at my Patreon, I'm charging $5 a month access and I've had a few comments that are like, as if I would fucking pay for porn or, you know, what, pay, pay for, pay for, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that not everything that I create has to be free. Like, do you know what I mean? It's amazing that, just because you can get porn or whatever. I'm not saying my work is porn, but I'm just saying, so what if you can get it for free? Yeah, well, like, like it's not the doesn't same. Mean, it doesn't mean it's going to be better. Like, no. that's the thing. Like, you can, you can get a shitload of stuff out there for free. It doesn't mean it's going to be good. Yeah, 100%. Well, yeah, and that's the sad thing. People don't, there's a lot of people, because you can get something else for free, they don't put any value in what 
isn't free. And well, it's, this, this, is, this is the bottom line. You know, why are we all arguing against people who share such different values? And this is where the biggest arguments are. The biggest arguments on YouTube that I find are where two people share completely different values. Yeah. And that's why it's a, such an interesting argument because, you know, they yep. don't see eye to eye. But you can't have a situation where they're being filmed and one person's going to back down. No, because, because if they're rep representing that side and they're representing that side, just yep. say left and right, as if you're going to walk away with an agreement. It's going to, no. so there's basically, it's pointless. You know, and you, you're always going to have differences in the world. And everyone's going to be different. If everyone was the same, it would be a freaking boring place. Like, and that's, that's why, like, I don't understand why, um, I mean, it's just so difficult. You know what I mean? Like I run a business where I do everything. Like I post up shit that I like. Yep. And I'm copying heaps of shit. I'm like, if you don't like it, just fuck off, right? I'm not saying that at all. I'm no. just saying if you don't like it, it's okay. It's yep. okay if you don't get it. I'm being really melancholy about it. I'm not saying if you don't like it, fuck off, you yep. know? But it's like the message is still there. It's like I'm not going to be posting stuff that you're expecting. And if that happened, then I'd be really upset about being so predictable. Yep. Um but again, I can't imagine how hard it would be to run a business that wasn't oh. Zen Garage. This is what I'm saying. Like, if, if you're running a business where it's a service-based and... I feel so sorry for some people. That, that, I, well, I don't know if I feel sorry for them or whether you... Because they must work in some of these corporate environments. And I see it in right. well, the marketing team in my office. And... Some of them have come up with the most creative ideas and you just see that they have to kill that idea yeah. and go back, like literally kills them because they have to come back and put it back through corporate speak and in the corporate way and following the company this direction. And some of the ideas they come up with, I look at them and I'm like, man, that's awesome. Like that is so cool. But, I know, and it but, just it, but it gets watered down, some, right? It, yeah, it, because it, some square head who's got no real idea, yep. sitting in a square office safe, somewhere, safe. safe office somewhere in a big corporate ivory tower, yeah, just does, make doesn't want to rock the boat or try something because yeah. they just want to keep doing what they know works. And well, I, that's the thing. That's going back to taking risks. You know what yep. I mean? Like um, big risk, big rewards potentially, and people playing it safe. It's safe culture. Yeah, we've become a very, very safe sort of society. No one's risk takers are called out, and people who don't take risks are, well, they seem to succeed. It's the whole get married, buy a house, and go from there. Well, I don't, I don't even know about that. Like, I, I don't know of any um, or many younger people that are doing that whole work really hard because I don't think there's, I don't think people have. Uh, a lot of people have that um, consistency with their work. Like, I don't think they've got a job where they feel secure in their job. You know, I think, um, I think, I think what's happening is that the people that are successful in this day and age are the ones that are specialized. Yep. And I feel like the herd mentality of going to work in the herd, it's not working for people. What's happening is that people are working in the herd and then they're desperately trying to live as somebody else yep it's almost like they're still in high school it's like they're going to school and then they've all got this after school personality person. yeah you know I, I think i've even mentioned it in with catalina's podcast something about like this whole dual life yes we have two lives but like it gets One. really tiring to do the clark kent superman clark kent superman it gets really tiring to do that so i've just decided to roll it both into one and I feel like it works better for me because then that way when someone rings the doorbell, I'm not like, oh, fuck, I've got, I'm wearing the wrong outfit. Yeah. It's like I'm, I am just... Who you are. You are who you just, are all It, the it time. just feels like I, it's less stressful for me in that I can't ever get caught out. Yeah. Yes, I can ruffle feathers and rock the boat and fuck shit up for myself. But right. at it is least who you it was, are, and it's always consistent, well, and it's always the same. It didn't take thought. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whereas other people, uh, if you're scared of saying things, then it takes thought because you have to think about it before you say it, or yep. you have to tippy toe. Um, and if you're trying really hard to figure out what your clients want or what your customers want, then you're constantly second guessing yourself because you're yep. constantly wondering what are they going to be happy with this? Are they going to laugh at this joke? You know what I mean? Oh my god, how tiring is all of that? Like I just, oh, I'm, 
I understand because I'm I probably got a little bit of that because yeah day job and outside yeah. of work is quite different people I have to yeah. be quite restrained at work I can't say a lot of speak my mind a lot yep 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 is it even that is enough no, like no wonder people blow up at work because if you have to be a certain way but oh, you're another way in your head and yeah. it's hard to change like it's really int- I find it fascinating that yeah. people can do it oh I'm for yeah, put on a I hat, said it's you know? literally debt slavery is the way I look at it I go in and make more money and I get out like, yeah it's like school. It is. It's very much. And so school sort of trained us to do, like somehow we all managed to turn up every day on time and we all turned up with ties on and fitted pants and shiny shoes. Because that's what we were sort of brought up to do. Conditioned, conditioned to do. Our parents conditioned us and that's where we've gone. Now it's beginning to, I think... We, yeah, going forward, I don't know if there'll be that level of conditioning. I think slowly there's going to be more freedom. I just, yeah. Look, I, I just think it's it, it's like this whole, um, there's a few issues that I have with with like society in general is like this bandwagon jumping thing is really pissing me off because I've seen it to a point where I've seen people jump on the Zen bandwagon. Yep. We did really well for a while there financially. And as soon as I started to really realize oh my god this is going to turn into a bunning situation and i'm going to hate this business i had to pull it back you know what i mean yep. and now i'm happier again with the brand i'm like where we were in the start yeah but it's like you know the quality uh, of the zen products improved yeah, well, and i think well, less is more in some ways as well yeah. it's like without being rude do you really want a freaking zen beer cozy and a zen this and a zen no. coaster and a zen that's where we were going we were selling domokuns and we were like what the fuck are we doing do you know what i mean it just got to a point where you slap your label on everything what what value does your label have anymore where is it mm. but yeah you can't... And, and that's the thing like you, I, i've always had this thing in my head if you give me a million dollars would i be able to make the million dollars make more money and you know what? The honest truth, like it's taken me fucking forever to answer. No, I reckon I just blow the million dollars. And that's life for me. It's kind of like, man, when you put your own money behind your own brand that you love so much and you've got your ethos and you've got everything's you, everything's like I can live with it. Yep. Because it's not like I'm promoting somebody else's brand that when I put my head on the pillow at night, I don't really know what they're thinking about the brand or where it's going to yeah. go. So I'm kind of like, the confidence is soaring high. Yep. You know, and when someone doesn't get the brand, I truly do understand that they don't get it. And I'm truly like, man, I definitely rub people up the wrong way sometimes. So yeah, there's no reason why my brand shouldn't either as well, you know? Yeah, but your, your brand's an extension of you in some ways. It... And it is for everyone. And this is why, like, I think... Um, I don't want to be that fucker that thinks I'm a small percentile, but over time, I think I, I am, you know. Like, I, I, I've seen David Carson, he's an amazing typographer, speak, and and he said that it was intuition was the reason why he moved something from the middle to the top left corner. Yeah. And I'm like, you motherfucker, you, you can't tell people that because it gives people no hope. Because yeah. then people are like, fuck, I'm never going to learn to be as good as that because I don't have that intuition. No, it can be taught, right? Like you can, you can teach someone to want to learn. You can teach someone to find their drive, uh, it- an obsession to get good, get good. Like I love that in um, Dark Souls, like Dark Souls 3 or whatever in these computer games where you've got a big boss and if you hit the button wrong on any split second, you'll just die. Yep. And, it, and it says you're dead, start all over again. And it's that, that, that whole those kind of games piss people off and all the reviews are kind of half of them are negative or like can't be fucked with this fucking game it's pissing me off and then the other half are like you just got to get good yeah and, and it just pisses people off because like that whole saying of get good yeah because they don't want to get they they want they the can write essays this long about why they don't like the game but in the end of the day it's just just get good mate yeah and or then if you, you put you, in the same amount of effort that you put into writing your two page moan about it and to, it should be like this and to like actually that. practicing and getting better at the game you'd pass yeah. yeah and it's funny that threshold is like i've been on the other side of it before too where i've i've, I've gone on a game and had to research and this is too fucking hard but then you yeah. do get good and you realize maybe 20 hours later there was something that you 
just blew your socks off and you would never have seen it. Well, it's that sense of achievement as well. And mm. it's that challenge, like, I know, I know in my head I've played games and then you've gone and watched a walkthrough or read a cheat on YouTube and when you finish clock the game, it's not the same feeling as when you grind away for freaking yeah. two weeks to crack the code to find the items to finish the game. All of a sudden you get that sense of fulfillment. But whenever I cheat and I finish the game for a couple of codes on YouTube or whatnot, yeah. it's like, cool, I've seen everything, I've done everything. But you didn't get that same sort of sense of satisfaction. It's like, cool, I've seen all the videos, I've seen all the outtakes, I can talk to everyone about it, but did I really do it? Nah. And, and that's what I reckon we didn't have an issue with 20 years ago. We didn't have an issue of someone um, spoiling the end of the Star Wars movie for us the next day. Yeah. So we didn't force ourselves to watch it quickly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just I think, find um, myself with that with all new movies now. I've got to go in because otherwise there'll be a post on Facebook or right. there'll be a meme or something right. on Facebook where someone just totally and utterly ruins it for you. And it's so, so basically, out of all this conversation, we can just both happily agree that the internet's just fucked everything up. Basically, it, it, it's, it's, it's made fucked the world business up. It's fucked every, like everything that we've talked about today has been affected by the internet. Yeah. And if we talk about old, old world values, what was different then was that there was no internet. Yep, 100%. <laughs> and to think that um, when the internet was first released, no one could think of like many uses for it. And that I think there were comments about what is the point of this thing? What, where is it going to go? What is it going to do? Man, I've never made more money than I did when the internet was out there you know I, yeah. I remember it. um i've got to read it out loud maybe in in or scan it at least but the uh sydney morning herald article that i was in i've got a quote in there that says you know money is not an evil thing yeah no no, no, no. i'm like reading it going wow who is this <laughs> who is this person <laughs> like because back then i was raking it in and i was like so good at um you know, people on the forums and stuff were like, Justin, how, how do I know how much to charge people and stuff like that? Yeah. And I'm, I developed games. That's, yep. Life's a game, right? So I'd meet a client like this, you know, yep. at my house, at my studio, whatever. And, um, and I'd know that, I, know, I would know that when a client's asking for a website, I, know, I would know that they would have a figure in their head yep. of how much they could spend, yep. how much they would like to spend, yep. and how much would be a bargain. Yep. There's three prices in their head. They already know their peak and what they'd like to pay. Yep. So when they always ask me, so Justin, you send us a, you know, a quote. You know, and I figured like, man, I used to write like the 20 page quotes to look so professional, break down every little bit, yep. like um, three web mock-ups for 3,000, 1,000, you know, whatever. And then I realized like I was trying so hard to play their game, yep. their corporate game. And they would beat me to it because they would say like, well, Justin, what about if you get the mock-up right the first go, then we don't have to pay you $2,000 for the other two mock-ups. And they were making my quotes go from like 50 grand down to 10 grand because they would knock shit out of my fucking proposal. Yep. So I'm like, fuck this. I'm not going to play this fucking game. So they're like, Justin, you're going to send me a proposal. I'm like, no, nah, I don't write proposals. They're like, right. Well, how are we going to agree on a price? I'm like, well, what's your budget? And that's, I would look them right in the fucking mm -hmm. eyes. And just say, and then, straight what's up. your budget? And they'd go, 20 grand. And I'd be like, gotcha. You know what I mean? I'd be like, yeah. Because you couldn't, after talking to me for an hour and me asking the first straight up question, it was a game that I played. Yep. No, it is. And a game. they could not not answer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then they'd say 20,000 or 30,000. That's why I was getting such big budgets back then. Yeah. And then I would say to them, you know what? That's about right. It's what. I was thinking, I was, I was always thinking less. I, yeah. I would do it for 10 grand or five grand, you know, but I always got more. But then I would always drop it by 5K yeah. and just say, I know that that's kind of the money that you've got to spend. Yeah. But I also know that if I gave you a bit of a discount or if, if my quote came in a bit cheaper, you would have been happy about it. Yeah. So how about this? And I'd, I'd you know, t take five or 10K off it. Yep. And they'd be so happy before the job even started because oh, we didn't rip each other off because we didn't do this exchange of you tell me a price, I'll tell you a price back. And then we did this and then, nasty way to start a job, it, you know? 
And conversations about money like that are always nice. And someone always fe- ends up feeling hurt about it. Right, but if they've got a price that they'd be happy with paying, and, you're, and then I, I'm like, well, then I'll work to budget. I'm not going to yep. say I'm going to do all these billions of mock-ups for that money now. If you've only got that money, well, I'll just do one mock-up. Yep. But that's where we work. Yeah, it's, it's when it someone happened. comes through and tries to pick the value out of what you do, and that's when people get upset and hurt. And it's like... Well. Uh, yeah. It's totally and utterly fair. Like, I understand it too. Like, uh, as a client, you can't just blindly believe that the designer knows better than you, so that yep. you have to leave everything in their hands. I believe that it's nice when you get a say. Yep. But I also believe that you're not entitled to having a say just because you feel like you need to get the designers to work a bit harder. From yeah. Because you know the amount of times where our first mock-up was the best, and someone only changed it because they felt like. Yeah, no, they had they to. to or they, wanted they felt to like see. surely we couldn't have a first meeting and go, wow, that's perfect. Yep. Job's over. Here's the money. <laughs> they, they want it to drag on. Yep. You know, and, and to be honest, as a design company, if you're a really good designer, you can do a logo within 10, 15 minutes yep. because you're good. Yep. You, you hire a junior designer, it might take them three months to do it because they fucking have no idea how to do logos and they're desperately trying. Yep. But it's like, I, I feel guilty for charging so much for 10 minutes worth of work, but I, I've got the skills to do it in 10 minutes. So it's a, tough, it's a tough call, do you know what I mean? It really is. It's like a business is funny like that. Oh, 100%. But you've got to, I think you've got to charge what you feel you're worth. Um, Mentally, because it, it's a self-worth thing. If you if you undercharge it's, yourself or you don't charge what you're worth, I don't think it's almost soul-destroying or self-sacrifice. You because yeah, you you you're not self. you begin to begin to feel that do you even value yourself if you're if you're undercutting your own what you think is your value? Like yeah, but I do that all the time, man. I I because I made so much money when I was younger. You ask all the people that I do work for, it's always on the cheap or yeah. for free or for beer, you know, yeah. or for booze. And I'm kind of like, it's not so much giving back. It's just like if you've got a good heart, good person, I'd rather do work for you yeah. than all the clients that I did work for in my previous life. You know what I mean? Like I did so much big money work, but none of them were my mates. They well, were just... It's that whole, corporates. I like to help people who want to be helped. And that's what me and Will try to do as well in business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We try to work with companies who actually want to achieve or they've got that internal desire because you're more likely to help people who want to help themselves. Um, yeah, it's just something that we really focus on. Like, hmm. We find that some businesses have come to us and they'll have a product or an idea and we can work really well with them and they'll engage. But other companies have just dumped something on you and it's like, well, I don't really want to work with you because we're going to do all this hard work for you and you're just going to walk away and make the profit. And like, Yeah, I, that's the reason why I don't work for others anymore yeah. like, so much. You know? e- even my mate Mark Pakula, who was ex-photographer for Auto Salon and is now at Microsoft, like, he asked me for a logo and I did one for him because he's my, a good mate. But man, I love his logo more than I love mine. Like I love what I did for him. Yeah. So much so that it it crushes me. Yeah. Because even the logo that I did for him, I couldn't do for my, myself because I've not got the same letters in my name as he does. Yeah. The, the J just wouldn't work cut like the way I cut his M. But yeah, it just hurts. It yeah. hurts. It hurts me sometimes to do cool shit for others because it's like. You see, in not, not so much in Mark's case, but in other clients like um, Autopia, who are huge now. Autopia are making millions of dollars um, doing this sort of rent, rent car, rental car sort of yep. thing. And, um, you know, like Jeff, the guy that I did the logo for, like I did it for chips, cheap as chips, you know. And then, like when I saw him at a car meet like a year later, he's like, check out my watch. I'm like... I don't know anything about watches. He goes, you know how much this fucking watch is? He's like, man, we made our first million. I'm like, yeah, but, 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 but I did that logo for nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, we're all a little bit crap. You're, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm, I'm, you're happy for them. I'm happy, they, I'm happy. Because they've succeeded. But yeah. then you're also thinking to yourself, oh, maybe I could have charged him 50 Gs for that because if he's gone and made a million bucks, like... Well, it's like, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, that was a client too. Like, the first time I met him was at a cafe... Uh, for a meeting 
And I was like, yeah, did that whole game, asked him the budget and stuff. And then he just said, like, at some stage, he pulled me over in the meeting. He said, mate, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be, you know, arrogant or rude or offend you, but I, I don't know who you are. And I don't know all the work you've done. Yeah. Just like, I've just got recommend, you were recommended, but I don't know anything about you. And I just realized how fucking stuck up I must have been. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, that logo fucking worked. Yeah. And he fucking got out there, you know what I mean? And it's still going off for him today. And I'm kind of yeah. like, uh, man, he didn't know who I was. And like, that pisses me off even more. You know what yeah. I mean? It's kind of like, I have that dream of, I suppose you want to be, um, you want to be getting work from people who want your, yeah. your style. They yeah. come to you not because they've heard that you're a good designer. No, because they've seen they, your work they, they, and they want something that they know that they want that. Whereas they buy into your ethos. They they get yes. they get what's yeah. going on in your head or yeah. how yeah. Yeah. how your yeah. take on the world is. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. You know. Yeah, it's exactly that. And I because you've got more synergy. I mean, you feel that you can relate, chat to those people and you've got synergies in the conversation and whatnot that you have with them because I just you're already mm. thinking on the same wavelength. Like it's, I find it really hard when I'm dealing with a client and they're thinking on a totally different way or wavelength to me. And I'm, I'm just like, man, where, where are you coming from? It's like, never going to end well. No, because it's, we're both coming from different directions. We're both looking to get something totally different out of this. Like, and we were like that. Like as a design company, Karen and I were taking on any job, yeah. anything, small budgets, big budgets, what the fuck ever. We were trying to make it rich, you know, we're trying to make money. So we, we took on any job and it's like, some of the shittiest jobs paid the least and went for the longest. Yeah, it, it, it takes time to learn to. I found to that say no work, the the smallest customers that make the biggest squeak, whereas the largest customers cause me the least problems. Or vice versa, but it's just always, yeah. it's always something like. It's I, the I, most I mean, pathetic issues become the biggest issues, whereas the actual yeah. big issues tend to not be. So making a mount, mountain um, mountain out of a molehill, eh? Like, yeah, there's I mean, there's a lot of that going on. Yeah. These days, in general. Yeah. But I, I also remember just part of my day every day was um, sending nasty emails to people asking for payment. Ugh. Yeah. No, nah, I keep well out of finance and accounts, and I don't. I don't really like chasing money or asking people for money, so I just leave it. Like. Man, that's what we did. We we were always paid like sometimes up to three months late. Yeah. Um, and you know we were juggling so many jobs that there might have been some jobs that we forgot to keep chasing for, and they might have gotten away with it because we yeah. were just like two twenty-year-olds, yeah, doing adult stuff, yeah, and just I don't know, I don't know how we did it. We just did it. Made it happen. Yeah, I, I couldn't that's do it now. You got to do. Sometimes. I mean, we were juggling ten jobs at a time. Sometimes ten, ten web jobs. Yeah, which is I couldn't do that today. <laughs> You know what I mean? I can't even check my email or, yeah. you, you know, like, like to be doing that all day takes like, you know, you're pushing around a couple of letter shapes, creating a logo for three hours and you take a break. Then you yeah. work on creating some HTML for three, three hours and you take a break. And then it, it's just like nonstop mental, yeah. mental stress. And I did it and I did yeah. it and I did it and I loved it. May, maybe the money did help, you know, maybe when you, you're sitting there with a, 20 grand I think when budget, it's kind of like, fuck, that's a lot of money. But I think when you're younger, money has, I think as you age, money has a different, you have a different perspective on the value of money and what money can do for you in life. So I even know when I was in my teens and early 20s, money was everything. All I wanted to do was get a job where I could earn as much money as possible because I thought money would bring me everything I wanted in life. And what is that though, anyway? Like what is... Because you, you're an interesting guy like that. Like because like well, back in the day, I used to think I, I was very much brought up to think the same way every other kid thinks. Got to go to school, go to university, get a degree, get a job, buy a house, get married, have kids, have babies, boom. But what were you into? Cars and. Well, I was trying to save. I was into cars. I was into sa saving money, but. Like what, I, what, I don't know what happened somewhere after I moved to Australia. I think well, you got a, you got that job that you're still in now. So that yeah. that's been like probably the biggest thing that happened to me was my mum dying about five or six years ago. Happened oh, quite suddenly. Okay. And literally, that gave me a bit of a wake up call in life. And all of a sudden, I went, "Well, if she's carked it, and she was sixty or whatnot, and just killed it all of a sudden, literally within a week." It's like, what am I fucking about worrying about 
making money so that I can own a flash house, so I can own a flash car, so I can own all of this flash shit if I could be killed in 20 seconds. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so that, all of a sudden it makes yeah. the whole, everything that I've been like told or worked for in life, all of a sudden I went, is this really worth it? My old man had the same sort of revolution because my dad used to be exactly the same. Work, 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 save, 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 pay the mortgage. Yeah. And that's pretty much all he ever did. Yeah. I and mean, all of a sudden he's gone, holy shit, I've lived 50 odd years of my life. Yeah. And all I've ever done has been basically a debt slave. Yeah. And all of a sudden it makes you wonder like, is all this money and everything going to bring you to happiness or is it actually getting out doing life experiences like I'm quite happy now if I can build a container house in New Zealand in a few years time move home live on a farm and freaking that'd be it for me I'd be quite stoked like but that's the thing like you if you I, don't I have don't, a goal like that then yeah. then you are just treading water in a, well I think you, you, know. you take the generic goal and it's not until you come up with your own goals in life you'll you'll just run with whatever the generic sort of all the sheep sort of goal is, which is get married, buy a house. And yep. you tell me how many people tell you, go, what's, what should you be doing at the moment? Saving to buy a house, saving to buy a house, saving to well, buy that's a what house. Well, that's what it was. Even these days, it still is. Everyone's clambering to get in the property market, to buy a house, to buy a second house so that you can freaking oh, just, I, I, yeah. I'm just not so driven these days by that. Like, No, I, I don't see why you would be. Especially, that's the thing, like you do need reminders like that. Yeah. Like if you, if you, your mother, your pa my parent, my dad dying taught me a lot as well. Yeah. It, it does teach you that life is short. Yeah. Um, and you do drop a lot of shit. Oh, when it made me dies. all of a sudden just realize like the shit that doesn't really matter. And yeah. th th this is the thing. This going back around, people who haven't had that loss are full of shit. This is what this is what it comes back down to. It's yeah. just like you, not everyone is equal. You can't yeah. have equality when someone's. Got, when there's so much different age groups intermingling yep. and so many different people of experience and non no experience yep. all intermingling. Yeah. And there's, I just, yeah, I've sort of realized no point being jealous and people who are successful, they've worked hard, they've, they've earned what they've got. It's easy to say, I'm, I get jealous. I'm, well, I'm still I, a jealous type. I still type. get jealous and I still think about it and like, mm get annoyed that there's some people out there who are in my, my perspective of the world do nothing but earn yeah. millions of dollars each day for basically doing jack shit or people who are bought up with a silver spoon in their mouth and it's like they, 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 those people when I see kids who are like 18, 19 years old driving a GDR and going to university and I'm thinking to myself mm. what the fuck have I done wrong in my life like where, where have I gone wrong here? Why, why aren't I driving in a, a $50,000 car when I was 19 when I was struggling to buy a $1,000 Ford Escort? Well, that's parents' money, but it, yeah. it's interesting. The parents aren't helping. No. You know what I mean? The help, parents aren't helping the, the kids. Um, I was I mean, kicked out of home at 19. It's like my parents were mm. like, mate, you finished high school, you finished whatnot. Well, I we're was, done I with was, you now. See you later, of, Justin. Like, Aussie kids paying their parents rent even. yeah my mum's literally the day i finished seventh form which is last year of school in new zealand she says it's 120 dollars a week rent from next week onwards and i was like yeah. what and she's like well you won't be work you won't be hanging with your friends christmas holidays you'll be working because she goes welcome to the real world well that doesn't happen in chinese families really <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like oh here's the house you can have the house and we're just going to buy a bigger house for ourselves or something like that oh here's here's the car yeah we're done with this car we're just going to buy a new one so it's a hand-me-down no, we we're very house. much, my parents were very much, you're on your own, go for it. Because they, they yeah. arrived in New Zealand in 80 with a, a suitcase and 200 pounds and that was it. See, I'm the other way around. Like, I, like my mum definitely worked hard and then the family came back into the picture to yeah. give her money. So she did do the hard slog. So, and my grandma started from nothing. So there's a lot of history of starting from nothing. But I always had it pretty good. Oh, I, I I'm, I'm not going to say um, I was brought up and I always had everything I wanted and whatnot, but I was never spoiled. And, then, well, the, mo yeah. and the moment I got to a everything I ever had, I had to work for it or earn it through my parents. But the moment I got to 18, they were very much like, yeah, they were, we're, welcome to the real adult, world. Yeah. We're not going to support you anymore. And in some ways, I'm good on them. Like they work hard. They deserve to enjoy the fruits of their labor and their success as well. And that's something that my old man started doing since mum passed away because he used to just whittle all the cash in the bank and all of a sudden he realised, mate, it's not 
what 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 good is it sitting in the bank looking at digits on your computer screen when you yeah. can be traveling that's the world well, out ex that's exactly what my mum my mum's done exactly that like yeah. when when he passed away my mum was like at some point maybe five years down the track ten years down the track she was like man what's the point of me holding on to all this money like, well, it doesn't do anything for you like mm. You might as well spend it. And that's what I said to my dad. I said, mate, you work hard. Go out and enjoy it. Like, I'm not sitting here waiting for him to pass on so that I can grab his cat. I want him to spend it and enjoy it and have a great life. That's, that's what I say to my mum too. She's kind of like, come on, let me buy you that Porsche you've always wanted. I'm like, no fucking way are you going to do this now. Like, after me doing the way, doing the things the way you've done things, going out on my own, not needing the flashy shit and stuff. Like, you yeah. can't undo it all now, mum. Yeah. So she's trying, but I'm like, there's better things we can spend money on, like traveling. Yeah. So she's like, you got, I'm like, well, you got all the money in the world. Well, let's go travel together. Have That's experiences. Better than her giving me a Porsche, which is going to undo all the hard work that I've done. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So I was always um, so into my mates and my Aussie mates, and I understood how they didn't have things that I had. You know, when I went to art school, design school, my grandma would cook an extra container or two so I'd bring them some food. Yeah. Because every night they were just eating $1 Lebanese bread <laughs> and we'd yeah. slice, cut it up and get a few different dips and we'd just eat that and we'd get a long neck each and yep. that was dinner. Yeah. But like every now and then, you know, grandma would cook up a storm and they'd be fucking scoffing it down, these arty fart students, you know? Yep. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, man, I, I'm embarrassed of the advantages that I have. Yep. Like where um, in, in third year uni, everyone was suggested, everyone was uh, basically had to go out and get a computer. Like yep. they were like, if you're going to pass this course, you're going to need a PC. You're going to need a, a, a PC. And um, Power Macs were like ridiculously expensive, but they were the non-Power Mac versions. And my parents were happily going to get me the power, the tower, you know? Yeah. But my mates were going to get the LCs, the small little units. Yep. And I'm like, no, nah, just get me the LC. Because I don't want to be yep. having that advantage of having no, a no. tower. And I was always that guy, embarrassed yep. about the money. Yeah. Not. Whereas, you know, the kids these days show it off, right? Like a yep. Merc with a P plate. Oh, but that's, that, that's offensive. It's like, what happened? I don't know what happened to the humble, be humble kind of like, honestly, like, isn't it embarrassing that what? you're learning how to drive in a car that costs so much and everyone around you knows how to drive better than you, but their cars are worse than yours? Don't you find that embarrassing? I would find it. Oh, yeah. One, I couldn't imagine giving my kid who's 18 a 60 or 50 or $60,000 car in the first place. I mean... Because it's that whole value thing, though. Like I had so there you some, go. The parents... I worked for. I remember working for months and months and months to buy my first car, and it was like a fifteen hundred dollar Ford Escort. Yeah. But because I worked so freaking hard for it, it was I, your car. It was my car, and I loved it. Like yeah. I loved that thing beyond belief. And, and and this is the thing. Like, and if you put it, if someone put a dent in it or something, you'd I be so upset. Cried. Whereas a guy who has the flashiest car put a dent in it, just fix it. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And and it's like this is the thing. It's like. The lack of care, um, the lack of um, learning how to drive a manual before driving an automatic, this is what's wrong with everyone. This is it. The, the, the lack of uh, the craft is gone. You know, like yeah. I talk about that person crafting a product out of a block of wood. Was they, even like they hurt their hands for it. Like and my you... parents used to give me shit. And I'd look after it and keep it in the box and it's all mint. And see kids these days just throw everything around and it's... It's we're very disposable. Everything's like on to the next thing. We're always looking for the. There's no. It's just so disgusting. Even being. even like that comment that I made before about like me posting up a sexy photo and then someone saying, you know, fuck that when I can get porn for free. Why is porn free? Porn isn't free. Like, what do you think these people are actually like fucking each other and getting diseases and shit for no money at all? I mean, there's money. It's a big business. So it's like... And if they are getting it for free, they're probably going to a site where they're, they're taking it. They're taking it, it for, for free. free. Because it's a stolen site. They're not actually yeah. even going to the actual yeah. website and yeah. paying for the porn. So yeah. in effect... It's just in effect, yeah, exactly. They're, this fake. Is the thing. they're fake. They're fake. It's the same as pirating a video or 
stealing a logo or something like that. They got no right to give you any shit because at the end of the day, they are the lowest of the low. Yeah. They are thieves. They, yeah. They, and, 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 and this is what I'm getting at. Is like I look at those comments and just think it's just such a wrong comment to make. It's because, so hypocritical. You're saying right. You're, you're giving me shit because I'm not going to give you free porn, but you're going to someone else's website and not even paying them for the content that and, they're and, given and, because you're going to a dodgy site like RedTube or something. You're not even yep. going to castingcouch.com, you and, scumbag. And, that, and that's why it's not even worth replying. Do you, no. do you not understand? Do you understand? It's like yeah. when someone is so it's not worth far it. off the mark. No, no, not worth giving them the attention or the, the air to breathe. Like just, yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to write an essay every time, but it's like, oh, man, I'm just getting lazier and lazier with replying to the haters. You know, I used to love it. I used to thrive on the thousands of people that would be reading the arguments. I think haters hate it more, though, when you don't reply because yeah. you, you kill it for yeah. them. You've killed their argument. You've killed their whole battle. What am I having? Cricketer's Arms. Is this Cricketer's Arms from Surrey Hills? Oh, Melbourne. Cricketers Arms is a cool pub in Surrey, in Surrey Hills. I mean, I shouldn't. I've got, I've got one here. Oh, no, I don't. Uh, can, can you please? Yep. Awesome. Thanks. I did have one here. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I reckon we'll wrap it up soon. But um, yep. no, I'm sorry good. for not recording the intro. We, we, we did talk about interesting stuff for the first half an hour. We were talking about like. Uh, YouTube taking over the world and all this kind of shit, but the end of TV and the uh, rise of YouTube. I wonder what's going to be next. I always thought it was going to be Vimo for a while, but Vimo died. Vimeo. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it was too. It was too arty. It was too designer, and it was like about the quality. Yeah. Whereas um, YouTube is just anything. It's just YouTube shit quality, and it's YouTube's just yeah. Well, YouTube like. What's interesting about YouTube is, you know, we, you and I could just record this video right now with the phone and upload it to YouTube. Well, I think that's the thing. YouTube is, uh, it's like, it is like Earth though, almost. It's such a variety of spectrum of stuff on there. There's, well, there's crappy no, phone fed videos yeah. down to full, full on people creating content using a studio these days. It's, I don't know how it works though. This is the thing like Google and I don't know. There's so much conspiracy going on. Like I have no idea how come you can upload a video and at the same time somebody else can, but then one of them get found, the other one doesn't. It's just the algorithms, that Every, word alone. Everyone is moaning about that on the YouTube videos at Ever the moment. Ever since the start. If, oh, I'm just saying. With they, the apparently internet, they've recently changed something on YouTube where it's not to do with subscribers, it's to do with people viewing your videos. I yeah. don't know, but... They've got but, some sort of funky system. and Yeah, and this is the thing. Like once upon a time there was Netscape, Alta Vista, Google, whatever. There were yeah. multiple browsers, which the world was more honest then. Yeah. Because now with only one browser, yeah. it's like, man, those people are paying to be on the first page. You oh, know what I mean? And it's, it's oh, 100%. Really, it's Back really, in the day, though, it wasn't, yeah, you didn't pay search engines. You did your actual created good content and whatnot. Yeah, so now now the world isn't the world. This is what I'm getting at. When yeah. you've got the people up the top running it, like um, censorship on YouTube is a legit real deal situation here where they can get so powerful that they can feed up political information that is of yeah. a particular side and not on the other side. Yeah. Because of... And, it's like, and this, this is what I, I don't like, that whole um, investing in other people's technologies and cultures when you have no control over it whatsoever. That's why I hate my content living on somebody else's content. Yeah. I don't like that idea. So of, it's time for ZenTube. Yeah, just for, <laughs> for ZenTube. No, but I just don't like the idea of like, boom. No, well you... We could have day, years invested into their website and, and then, then... their site closes or shuts down. It's much like the whole photo bucket image shack thing where everyone got shafted by photo bucket image shack when they... Changed did, something and then all the images were broken across all my forums and yeah, shit. Yeah, so basically... That's a the, major They issue. went in and told everyone if you want to have the images still in there and have them still linking to the forums, it's $400 a month or something. They did that with Flickr too. So all of my threads... All of my build threads, which I spent so much time on, have broken images. Yeah, and Fucking essentially, cunts. I think, and the worst part is, if you didn't go to Image Shack and re 
update your password by the 31st of December, you lost all your images. Because I went into my image shack the other week yeah, looking for a right. picture of one of my old cars because I know it was in there. And then it's not there because you didn't do something. Because I didn't pay them and it's now blank. And it's like, if you want us to restore this, you've got to pay a fee. And I'm just like, you guys are dirtbags. Like, That's fucked up. Like policy change like that. That's what I'm saying. It's like you rely on somebody else's yeah. technology and then they fuck you eventually. And it doesn't matter if you were there from the start. Yeah. You know? But at least we've got this. We can't complain too much because at least we've got this platform to at least get out there in the first place. And Mate, I'm using it to... My advantage. Yeah, 100%. I'm using the internet. I've always been. I mean, not many people know that about me, but I was one of the first web designers in the country. Yeah, and I designed the first e-commerce mock-up of what an e-commerce homepage would look like for Telstra. Yeah, and they didn't even call it e-commerce. Yeah, they didn't know what to call it. Electronic store, um, and I was designing a fake Telstra CD store. So we had like Virgin Records, and you know those kind of big record shops. Yep. And they're like, Justin, just take one of those shops and see what it would look like on a website. And I created like this thing with four, because 640 by 480 resolution, you know, and I could only fit four CD album covers and I offset them so they weren't so boring in a straight line. One of them was up, one of them was down, one of them was up, one of them was down. I had like 30, 34, 95 underneath it or something. And yeah. then I created, how am I going to do this? Like, I created the buy now button. Yeah. No one told me. Yep. I just came out of design school. Yeah. I'm like, how am I going to make a call to action? How am I going to add this to a cart? Yeah. You know, so I created this huge orange buy now button that when you rolled over it, I had this JavaScript that had a rollover state and an on state as yep. well. And it was like, man, blue minds back in the day was such simple shit. Yeah. But, but I didn't know what I was doing. No, but like no one knew, you know, like it was like, what does it, what does a shop look like? No, oh, who thought we'd be ordering groceries on the internet 10 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's just like, I don't know. It was just good, good days. It was definitely interesting. Like, yeah. I don't think we've had a movement like that since. No, I you, think it's the know. internet and the mobile phone has changed everything for us. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, I think the mobile is even more dangerous than the internet in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, well, the mobile has created mobile computers, right? I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, like, but I, I think the mobile has allowed us to be so connected that a level of connection to others that we've never had. Yeah. And I had this conversation all the time. Like, when I was at high school, if you wanted to chat to a mate, you had to write home, pick up the home phone, hmm. call them, get through the gatekeeper, which was their parents, parents yeah. and then freaking have a chat to your mate. Halfway through the call, your mum's going to come in and pick up the phone. Um, and you go, oh, and you're still on the phone. You're chatting to I your know. girlfriend. Someone picks yeah. up the call. Fucking earth, man. I used to always get like, like getting nervous about dads. ringing the freaking the dad yeah, to the speak dad to his daughter. Up, yeah. Like, I know. Hi, Mr. Jones. Is Sarah there? Yeah. What, rah, rah, what are you ringing for? Rah, rah, rah. You get through that and finally get through Fuck to the parent. Yeah, I remember all of that. And like, just you just or losing talked the cordless all night, the, right? The, the phone's ringing somewhere in the house and your mum's going nuts. No one knows where the what phone is. It's buried is. in the bottom of your sister's bed somewhere. It's just, yeah. Fuck, those were the days, man. But that was the thing. You didn't have a mobile. You actually had to like organise stuff. Well, like, well, I'll, we, I'll meet you at the cinema at 9pm. That's right. PM, Town Hall and you steps had, and you, you had, had to be, be there. there like nine. half an hour max and they would walk. If, yeah. you, were, if you were late, you knew These that they would see like, you later. Don't worry, man. I'm, I'm 10 minutes down the road. Don't yeah. worry, I'm coming. And it's like, yeah. Just, well, that, that's the thing. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. We fucked ourselves over then in that case. You know what I mean? Like, uh, there's so it's so many more distractions today that people just are busier than ever, but not really. It's just busy with distractions. It's busy with bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to strip it back. You know what I mean? It oh, is like a drug. I'm like, full on FOMO. Like my fear yeah. of if I'm not on Facebook is am I missing out on something important or something's going to happen that I'm going to be missing out on hearing about? And it's like, well, you're not. You see, because yeah, you know not, that if you mentally, live in a small town, yeah, you're happier but, and it's nicer and everyone's friendlier. Yep. This is what people have forgotten, or they don't know what it is yep. to be in a small town. Yeah, like they don't know what it's like to get scones at that cafe that's always perfect because they put love into the fucking scones. Yeah, they just don't know it. No, you know, like I think a lot of people maybe. What happens is the young kids go out to the Blue Mountains or whatever, and when they do stop off for a pie or something, they're Mine's wearing blind. their hip hop gear, going fuck, 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 whatever. You know, like I, I went out to the, the these rocks, the the white 
the White Rocks, I forget, Bandina. Yeah. And like, there's a group of Asian kids there and they were obviously Westies, man, because they were yelling fuck and shit and stuff out of the top of their lungs. And I'm like, man, if they just shut up for a second and just... Enjoyed it. Right? It was the most beautiful thing and people were there doing this trek and that was the end of the trek. Yeah. And you get there and there's this big group of Asian kids that are just screaming fuck and shit and pussy and cunt and stuff. I'm like, almost, guys, calm down. But I don't want to punch in the face either. Yeah. But it's like, man, that's everything that's wrong with the, the kids. Yeah. That was internet generation and a half. Phones out, fucking piggybacking, causing yep. a ruckus and like not even just appreciating. Well, it's the, it's the instant gratification generation. Not, not even, in, not, like not even respecting other walkers and other yeah. hikers. You know what but I mean? Everything's so instant these days. Um, got another good example is like I went to Taiwan when I was 15 for mm. a six-week holiday. Took freaking 20 rolls of film. Took me about a month and a half of getting the film developed, going to the store, you drop it off, you pick it up seven days later. It cost me about 300 bucks. <laughs> You know, these days it's like go home, throw the memory stick in the computer and it's there. It's like, I don't know, there was almost an excitement to me as to seeing what was on the film and how good know, my photos right? actually were. Because like, I come back and I was like telling my parents about this and that. And, yeah. and it's like, oh, I'll show you when the photos get developed. And I'm sitting there going, frick, I hope they're good photos. Like, I, I, I quite enjoyed that. Like, well, yeah, that there's, there's like, it's getting to a point where no one shoots film anymore because it's that hard to get film. And it, get, it gets to a point where shit just fucking is Stops. no longer an option. Yeah. And that, that's when I get upset. I get upset when I realize I'm one of those people that stopped supporting it in the first place. Yeah. And no wonder. It's like the murder show we talked about, like film, like, like um, um, an old mate, uh, Jess and I, we were dying to pick up one of those um, cheap, disposable cameras and we're both 100% in our heads thought that, that they're everywhere I've got everywhere a cardboard still. Fuji one sitting at home brand new in a box in my cupboard well and they used to be on every single um, supermarket aisle when you're checking out yeah same as like all those stands around the city the little like tourist shops, shops or whatever that whatever. sell the water always used to have the disposable right. cameras so we, in our heads we were 100% oh we'll find one for sure we walked everywhere we were in Melbourne we just wanted that style that film style yeah Bro, we couldn't find any. And we would just realize that at that particular moment, both of us just got called out yeah. from old generation. You just yeah. got fucking called out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like hopping on the bus with only yeah. spare change and realizing, oh, sorry, there is no change on this bus. We've it's only so got... Cool card only. Yeah, and it's kind of like, wow, I got called out. I, yeah. I, got, I got... It happened to me. Yeah. It's happened yeah. where something just changed yep. and took over. You know, you'd be at the airport and then you got to do this and that and stand here and do this and fucking look at that. And yep. you see the old people struggling with it and then the staff going, look at here, stand in it. It's like, yep. guys, calm the fuck down. They're not used to this. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Like you almost used sound to an racist Asia experience because, like, where they pretty much walk or, walk through a gate. Get they don't the speak ticket your language. Person. You're telling them to take your glasses off. Take your glasses off, man. Take your hat off. It's an old Asian, yeah. eighty year old lady. Bro, calm the fuck down. This is confusing for me. Let alone. Yep. She's got to look at this on an angle, stand that way, and <laughs> make sure she's got all the gear off her head. And it's like, oh my god. No, hundred percent. You got to yeah. put the fucking photo in down. In the it's thing. it's yeah. difficult for people yeah. who've never done it before. It was yeah. confusing for me the first time. Oh, the emptying your pockets, throwing everything in trays. It's, yeah. it's all out of control, isn't it? Yep. Process for process. So where, where to from here, Justin? I mean, you're, you're this uh, technical brain who's crazy about motorsport, who's working for the man doing a shitty job that pays, you the, pays for the bills. Well, Long-term plan? Hopefully... Hopefully, if we can get things rolling um, with myself and Will, the long-term plan is to bring some of the products to Australia and set up business and start selling the tanks, the septic tanks, and all the water collection products in Australia. You only need one thing to, 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 we, to we take one, off, right? Once one thing takes off, we are going to invest all our effort into aquaponics, and that will be it. I mean, hopefully, eventually, they'll make cannabis legal and we can just grow heaps of cannabis in containers. <laughs> Using aquaponics <laughs> as an awesome way to create it. We did, I, you're a smoker? Yep. I've been a smoker my whole life. Um, 
Are they making it legal? I would suggest the, 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 in New the, Zealand. The, I would suggest in New Zealand and Australia it'll be decriminalised within ten to fifteen years. I, I reckon even less. Like even I, less. I, I think it's the been happening opportunity, for a long time. Well, they're going to have to replace tobacco tax and the revenue they make from that from somewhere, and this yeah. would appear to me to be an easy option. It's. So, uh, have you been to Colorado, or have you been to an American country uh, state? Sorry, where the, the, there's not yet. I, I think we have to go. Just, I mean, as smokers, I just want to experience what it's like to be in a place where you're free from guilt. You know mm. what I mean? The, 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 it's like California. To me, California, they reckon it's the most anal American state. So they've got the most restrictive laws about emissions for cars. Right. Trying to keep a car legal in California is just about impossible because they've got so many strict emission laws. Yet they've gone and legalized weed. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, holy heck, what are we doing? The, the, the governor of Colorado fell off his chair when they took the tax take after the first six months after they legalized it when they got 251 million or something. And yeah. he just goes, why weren't we doing this earlier? Well, we're doing it with cigarettes here. I mean, 30 bucks for a packet of cigarettes yeah. is... I mean, that's the most expensive cigarettes in the whole planet. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. New Zealand's up there as well, I believe. They're like 40 bucks for a pack of 25s or whatnot. Well, that, it's, it's just wrong. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. but at the same time, I get it because that's doing nothing but harm. Yeah. You know, there are medicinal property, properties to weed, obviously. So... Yeah. But, um... I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure, like, I've heard an inside rumor that they're taking it off the MDTs because they're making way for legalizing it for medicinal purposes. Yeah. And apparently they've put cocaine on MDTs, so that's going to fuck all the lawyers up now. Yeah. You know, yeah. I kind of oh, like there, it. There, there, there's going to be some very stressed lawyers in and, uh, Sydney if there's... Because I'm, I'm kind of like, why do the MDTs pick up everything but cocaine? That's a fucking conspiracy and a half because all the rich people in Australia... In Sydney, all the movers and the shakers, all they do is coke. Yeah. But like, I'm surprised to hear that they're testing for coke because that's going to fuck a lot of people that drive Mercs around. You know what I mean? Like, oh, all right, there will be a couple of very embarrassing high profile people who get done and then all of a sudden that law will disappear because they will kick up such a stink after they've been... Coke with coke? Yeah. Co I know coke makes that industry run, man. Like yeah. The really rich, the filthy rich. I know that they're on that shit. Oh, 100%. That's when I worked at the Hilton in Auckland, the, the guy who owned it got busted and it was him and about 15 other high-end people from the top end of town in Auckland were all done for... It's the worst fucking drug, man. I don't know, people love it, but I'm like, I know Sydney loves it, but fuck, I've never loved it. I've never loved something that if you have it, 10 minutes later, you've got to do another one. Like, get fucked. It's so expensive. You've and got to buck all night. That. It's that Sydney, it, without being rude, there's a certain mentality of people who do, and it's yeah. that eastern beaches, flashy, without being rude, wanker. Well, it makes you... I'm driving it, a freaking, yeah. my BMW convertible. It gives with you my an ego. The it, drug itself it's makes you more confident. Calm, confident, collected, and yeah. just helps nurture what... But there's so two types of coke here, man. There's like good shit and there's cheap shit. And cheap shit's still expensive. Yeah. Like only 50 bucks cheaper for a little baggie or something. And that cheap shit, man, like I had a couple of boys over and they were doing this cheap shit. And the difference is, right, I'll do, it, I'll do like a half a line or not even of the good shit and I'll vomit straight away and yep. I'll be high as a kite for hours. And then the bad shit, it's like every 10 minutes you got to do a bump. And these guys were yawning on it. Yeah. Like they were bumping and yawning and I'm like... That's not a good look. That is disgusting. It's the worst thing I can think of. Like, it's as bad as, you know, people who drink and pass out or whatever. It's the same shit. Yeah. But, like, that's a very expensive thing to have. Oh, it's just... Just what? to sleep. Like, yeah. like, people are saying as far as, like, I need to do a bump before bed. I'm like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> this thing is meant to be... You have a bump and you go and rage. Yeah. But if you... If people who are, that, that I talk to that are addicted to it are like... They bump to just go to bed? Yep. I'm it, like... They're treading it being it's become almost like Le brittle and Well, I just, I just find that, like, that is something that just I've I experienced recently. And I think that that is next level hardcore. Like, I love weed. I love drinking. I reckon I'm pretty hardcore with it. But, like, I think that is next level. It's... Like, I, I just, I, I think 
I think like, ah, oh. I think it's a cost thing and it's an image thing. And it's, uh, it's much like driving the flash car or having a nicer watch. It's I'm, I've moved on from this and I'm now at this level. Well, you just need a new drug, don't you? If, it, if you're taking it and it's making you go to sleep, then, 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 then you know, you need a, you need a new drug. Like well, it's that like, says, like, everything. It's, yeah, you need, you need to get into that. It's a cyclic thing. It's sort of you become too used to this because you've done too much of it, so you need yeah. something else to give you that new hit. Yeah. I, 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 lo I love watching slope. really intelligent people who do TED Talks and stuff like that talking about them giving up weed, and it's really fascinating because they're the people that get trapped by it the most. Yeah, because they're creatives and they just get so trapped by it. The next thing you know, they're not writing at all anymore. They were writers, and the next thing you know, they're writing stoned, but they're writing different, and it's yep. not as good. And then, like, they're the people who end up having to take a stronger drug. Yeah, because they find, want something else to find out what's wrong with them with the marijuana. And then they 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 do they go on these trips to India or whatever and find find some something to take them out of mind completely yep. so that they come back home and they realize that the weed is evil and that they didn't like it and that they had to break up with they, they always look at weed as a relationship yeah the, the people who are the most involved in it and have have gotten rid of it are like i just had to break up with her yeah it's always a her it's yep. always mary jane and yeah and she, it was a relationship and she just it's it's so it's an interesting it's an interesting one the people the way people different people in the way that they look at drugs and yeah. how, how they think of it some people think of it it's yeah it it it's a really really interesting and massive I, I, I find topic. it fascinating especially the people who are the most distinguished writers and politicians and stuff who have come out yeah. years afterwards and saying saying that well during this period of rain they were stoners all day long, you know, yep. and they had like big equipment and everything. And they were yep. like, um, these guys are, I, 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 oh, I forget his name, but man, he's an old dude now, he's retired. He does all the big TED Talks and stuff like that. But he's just come clean on the Joe Rogan show about his addiction. Yep. And he was like, because he's loaded, he was buying like, yep. he said like the amount that he had in the house... And all the volcanoes and gear that he was buying, he'd buy like three or four of them just in case one would break. Yep. Is like if that he ever did get caught, he'd, he'd be... go to fucking jail for this shit. And yeah, yeah, hundred like percent. He's just a personal user, but it's just because he's a filthy rich. Yeah, he, he takes can it afford to the next it. He's like, oh, we're just gonna buy it in bulk. Yep. But it's just fascinating, like, um, you know, that image of the guy doing nothing at home, being a stone and watching Netflix all day. Oh, I think, um, it yeah, it, it's, it's a it's, crack up. It's, it's the generic stereotyping of someone who, who punches bullies. That means that they're the person who's or they're from, dumb. They're, they're dumb. down. They're from Western Sydney. They're using the Gatorade bong. They've got two children. They're freaking no job, no hope. Freaking basically a house. Oh, it just cracks me up because you see so many famous people or rich or successful people have now come out and said, well, we're using or we've done or we've what Everyone's and it, using. And, it, and it's destroyed the image, but the image is still still bad, unfortunately, in New Zealand. And, oh, no, 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 it is. It, it is. And, and I still think it is bad for people who don't, who lack drive to begin with. Yeah. All right. If you, if like, honestly, the reason why I smoke pot is... Because I'm so fucking hyperactive, my brain is going a million miles an hour. I can create a new business a day easily with yep. a new logo, a new website, new Instagram, everything. I can do that every day of the year. Yep. I need to be slowed down. Yep. So it's, it's a bad drug for a lot of people oh. who are slow, sloth-like to begin with. Then they have it and it becomes a problem. But like for someone like me, I've always used it as something to slow me down. Yeah, and it's like you're riddling. It's the, it's yeah, it is a lot like Rylan. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I, I know people are running to conclusions saying they got depression or fucking suffer from anxiety and all of that shit. But um, oh, I'm the, sure I am. The psycho babble, I think. Yeah, ADHD. I'm sure I, I suffer from that hardcore. I think we're so quick to put labels on stuff like, these days like that. Like, 
Mm. Back when I was growing up, we didn't have any of that shit. You were just a naughty kid. And that was pretty right. much it. You were, the, you were a little shit in class yeah. who had issues. Like, yeah. you weren't ADHD, you weren't this, you weren't that. You were just a little shit. Yeah. And these days, every, everything's got to have a label. You weren't even lactose intolerant back then. Like, no, you, d- no, you like, didn't I, have I, celiacs, lactose intolerant kids. I remember going to school, we had one girl who was allergic to milk, and that was pretty much it. And she was actually allergic to milk. But the rest of us, we all just ate whatever we ate. Like, Well, the, on television every day was drink your glass of milk yeah. if you want to be healthy. Yeah. You know, I mean, yes, we've learned a lot more about pe- the body and stuff, but I look at it and we've I made look at it all worse. of us and I think, hey, we're, we've all come through this. We're all alive. We're all kicking. I, I think I should go back to drinking full dairy milk because that's what I did growing up and I was I fine. Still do. But I'm just saying like, you know, I'm drinking soy and I have been since soy came out. And then at some point people say soy is fucking bad for you. And then the, this is good for you. And I'm like, man, this I is find, I think you could find an article on the internet that says everything is bad for you. If you <laughs> search hard enough these days, like yeah. everyone's got opinion on everything. Um, I think you just got to like do a little bit of research and make your own decisions on it. And end of the day in my life, if people don't like what I'm doing, well, as far as I'm concerned, go fuck them. I, I'm quite, I'm I'm quite happy with what I do and where I'm at. And yeah. I'll listen to someone else's opinion. Um, I don't always agree with them. And I'll just keep doing my own thing. Like I, I think that comes with age. I think I'm a lot happier now in my older age because I don't have... Um, oh, 100%. I think that's yeah. definitely an age thing. As I've grown thing, yeah. up, I have learn that I just don't give a shit about other people's opinion. I, I hear- used to get really upset. Like, well, was- especially if they haven't done anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't. I, I, I don't just used to get upset if someone or- gave me shit or said you're yeah. a nerd or you're this or you're that. I, it used to impact me. These days, I'm just like, you know what? I really couldn't give a rat's what you say. Yeah. I'm really happy. I've got good mates. I'm happy with where I'm at in life. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Well, I'm just totally whatever. So there's bigger fish to fry in life, and I, again, I think that was the whole impact of mum dying. Just made me realise, like, why why worry about the bullshit um, and just move on and like freaking life's life. Like shit happens, but yeah. hey, end of the day, it's up to you to make the most out of it. Like, well, you've got to be good. Like, I think when when you lose a family member, you realise, well, yeah, you got to believe that you, you want to make them proud. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that was the other thing. I thought all of a sudden, like, yeah. I'll You've got to be try a good and make, person. Do, enjoy the rest of my life and do as best as I can for my mum. Yeah. But it also made me realise, like, frick, man, like, you've only got a short short amount of time. Time is the most limited thing that we have, and yeah. you've just got to make the most of it and enjoy it, and there's no point stressing over bollocks. Like, yeah. There's no point wasting time. Like, we've only got such a short, infinite space of life, like, why do we waste so much time on bullshit? Like, blatantly honest, there's so many better things to be doing. Like, it's lo- it's short, but it's long too. You know, like um, I caught up with Christy yesterday, my mate Christy, and she, um, she just had to fly home for a funeral. Yeah. Twenty one year old. Yeah. Her mate, and it's just like, man, suicide at twenty one. Like, I know life is intense when you're that young, you know, but you yeah. got to get over that hump, and then it just you have this other second wind. Yep. You know, it's kind of like... Suicide's such an interesting thing. Oh, bro, so I just don't selfish. even know where to start. Yeah, 21, and he hung himself too, so he was found by his mum. It's like, so selfish, up, in my bro. opinion, because no, you, uh, you don't think of... You're only... You're, again, you're acting on you, what you want, but you don't think about anybody else you're going to impact. His mum's yeah, now yeah, going to be Yeah, but obviously the chemistry going through his yeah. brain and stuff is just so beyond. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's oh, I can, so beyond... Oh, it's beyond anything I can comprehend. Yeah. Yeah. I've I mean, never, they're not, they're not I, thinking I straight. I can't really comment on it because I've never been in that position. That's what I'm saying. They're not yeah, thinking yeah. straight. You it's, know? it's a very hard topic to even discuss because <sighs> unless you've been in that position or it, yeah, it's a I, real I have, tough, I have difficult ones, one. Like I've had so many out-of-body experiences, but I've had one where I was so in my body that I felt like necking myself. It was this feeling of like um, being in the bed in the middle of the morning, it's pitch black I don't know how to massage this weird feeling that feels like I need to massage it but it's like a nerve in a bone that I can't reach so I feel like my back is sore but it's like it's an uncomfortable as opposed to sore and it's this moving around non-stop 
and to the point where I'm standing up and going, I'm just going to jump off a cliff because I can't stand this feeling. And yep. I've had it once only. And now I know that it, other people, it, it must happen, this anxiety attack. Yeah. And I don't know exactly how and why it happened, but I know that when it happened, I couldn't live with it, not even for a minute or two. No. So I know that if people are suffering that, my God, Oh no! That'll I could well imagine there that'll must be something. Do it. There, yeah, there's you obviously know, something that'll drive you to do it. But that it's just drives like, you to do it. I just, I, I personally have never had that experience, so I can't. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I can imagine. You can I imagine, can imagine, but can I can't 100 percent emphasize because personally, it hasn't yeah. affected me. So my my opinion or thoughts on the matter are only based on what I've experienced and. That yeah. it's never been that bad for me, but I, yeah, I totally accept and accept that some people like some people. Yeah, I mean, I also know another guy that I met through Zen who suffers depression and could be part of the suicide club. But when he reaches out to me and talks to me about that stuff, uh, I, I was replying for a while, but then I, after a while, I'm like, dude, I don't know if I'm qualified for this. Yeah. Like I know people are like Birdie from Casper Hope just saying, you know, reach out and ask people if they're okay. But I think like that people puts are, a lot of pressure but, on the person you're reaching out to as well, though, because if that both person... pressure on yourself as it, well. Like yeah, you, you're not qualified, you know? If that person you know? isn't qualified or doesn't feel comfortable in that position, that's putting a lot of pressure on someone else. That's like, what I'm saying. I, I don't think... I think it's a loaded question, like, yeah. are you okay? Because... Yeah. It, cause, cause, most people, when you're telling them their problems, they're like, I oh, don't worry about it, mate. She'll be right. That's the bad thing. Can't, I can't help someone with their problems because I, I wouldn't, I can give them some advice, but yeah, it's, it's a really difficult one. Advice is very scary to give. You know? It is because you don't want to give the wrong advice in that situation. Well, and, in any situation. Yeah. I, 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 as much as I can, I avoid giving people advice. Yeah. No, nah, that's. You know, the, I tell them what I did. Yeah. And that's why sometimes people think, oh my God, he just talks about himself. But that's my way of not saying what you should do. Yep. This is what I did. Yep. This is how I got there. Yeah, no, um, I whenever I tell people advice, I always say to them in, in advance that, I, by the way, I hate giving advice. So take this with a grain of salt because, my God, you don't want to be responsible for someone taking your advice. No, 100%. You know what I mean? Like, you could really fuck people over if you advise them incorrectly. Wrong. Yeah. You know? No, no, it's that whole... It's the way you phrase things and how you've got to tell people. And sometimes it's like, well, in my opinion or in my experience, this is what I think. Yeah. But please don't 100% take this as the Bible or the it's black like and white. It's like that shitty fucking stunt thing that they always put that message before stunts. Oh, like, yeah, like yeah, by yeah. professional stunts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Before you turn on your freaking whatever it is, um, ex- oh, I can't even, Travis Pastrana's show or whatever it is, what you may see tonight is done by trained professionals. Yeah, Please dude, do that not. Shit, that yeah. fucking screen. Yeah. We should put one before these podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought the better one, though, was at the end of each week was the same time, same channel, same station next week. Same bat time. Same that channel. channel. Yeah, or Lost in Space. Oh, I used to love those old school shows. Man. Black and white, and Lost in Space, same channel, same place, same time next week. And leave you hanging with Batman freaking stuck between some rubber sharks or like about to be attacked by rubber spikes or something in some trap, eh, back in the day. Loved it. All right, mate. Well, let's wrap it up. We're, we've almost gone. Well, if you, if you include the footage that I... Forgot to record. We definitely did over three hours. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Nice. Time flies, you know. But um, thanks for coming on. No, it's sweet. It's good to come in. Um, we, haven't, we haven't caught up in a while anyway. No, it's usually our yearly catch-up. Yeah. And you always bring me something nice to drink. Like, always. Yeah, well, you've got to have good brews in life. It's all about trying new things. But, but I think that's also, like, uh, something about you as well. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I think a lot of people, like I had a guy come over for um, some business advice Yeah. and he brought a six pack of beer and yeah. then he desperately said to me like, man, I am your future. I need you to come open this, this business with me, yeah. you know, and whatever salary you want, everything it's yours. And I just said to him, bro, like why would anyone invest in your brand if you're saying that you want me to be the brand and you're investing in me 
Yeah. I'm like, how can I even respect you for wanting to get another person to be the brand? Yeah. I'm like, can't you even see it from my perspective? This all just seems very dodgy, crazy. And he was so offended and he was so shocked yeah. that I wasn't jumping up and down with joy and accepting the job. Yeah. To run his business for him and I get all of his money because he's Japan. rich, rich kids or rich parents or whatever. He was so shocked that he didn't say thanks. Yeah. He walked out and he took the rest of the four beers with him. I mean, uh, you don't take beers to someone's house and take your scraps home. You always leave your beers. He came over for my advice. I gave him my advice. I told him uh, it was a proper consultation and he took the other four beers home. And I'm just like, you no, what? No, you, no. You know, that, that's the difference. Whereas you have always brought me an amazing bottle or something for, for my time. It's, and it's like, that's, that's... I don't know, I just couldn't imagine ever going to someone's house, taking something with me like food or beers and then, and then packing it up and taking it home with me if they didn't need it or didn't drink it. It's just... yeah. I, and and, and Wasif brought me a case. I mean, that's only two of us. He brought it and he left it. The yeah. case. And that's what you do, right? That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's how, what that's you do, how, right? That's how it rolls. Like, you're going to someone's house, you're using their hospitality. It's right. like, thank you very much for Whereas your... Whereas some of these young kids are like, can we please take your time or what beer do you want or whatever? What beer do you like? And then they come over empty-headed. Yeah. Or, you know, well, girls as well. Like, if I don't want to charge for a shoot, I'm like, well, just at least bring a bottle or something. Yeah. And they come over empty-handed. Oh, I couldn't find a bottle shop. I'm not, what do you mean? We booked this shoot three weeks ago. Couldn't like, find a bottle shop. There's a bottle on the shop day. on the road, on the way down right. the road. I but drove there past. Is one yet. Right. I literally drove past four bottle shops. But that's just lame. It, this it, is what I'm it's getting. Laziness. At. It's laziness. Yes. And why should it be okay when I'm the one doing the work? I'm, you know, where the photos at, and I'm the yeah. one that's uploading the photos that night. Yeah. It's different. It's a different mentality. It's a different ethic. I think we've become old. We've become old, but I was always busy doing shit. I yeah. wasn't never, I was lazy. I'm fucking lazy now. Yeah. But I'm still get shit done. Yeah, no, definitely. It's like I'm the busiest lazy person in the world, for sure. And I don't know how it works, but it's a shitload better than just being lazy. Yeah, but you always get shit done. Always. And that's why these catch-ups are great, because it's kind of like, you know, like even with Wasef, he just wanted to catch up. And I'm like, man, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone, because uh, I have no time. I haven't... You know, if I'm going to catch up with someone and say something that could help other people, that, that, that's two birds with one stone. So. Yeah, no, nah, sweet. It's been good. Yeah. All right, man. Awesome. It's fallen to one weekend anyway. First weekend of the year. I don't know. I, I'll probably watch it and fall asleep. But uh, I, I have you to keep me um, up to date on Formula One. I think that works for me. You know what I yeah. mean? Like if there was... Well, uh, I keep harassing you. I think I keep seeing you Formula One clips and IndyCar clips and whatnot else. And yeah, we try and try and motivate you into it. Well, well I'm, I'm into it. But the th what, one thing that really pisses me off about Formula One is there's been some amazing races throughout history that I would love to watch again and I can't. And I don't like that. I don't like that. It, it gets televised and it gets fucking locked away. Yeah. Like I just don't like... That's about different Formula One. Now, and I it's think it will never be very, on YouTube. It's it will, so tight. They're it will so be, tight with it. I think it'll be so different going forward. Like, I just think, you know... The Americans who have bought it are either going to ruin it or make it great. And we'll wait just, and see. YouTube needs to have all this stolen content is part of culture. Do you know what I mean? I think the like, Americans who have bought it realise that, though. Yeah, they, I want to see They've got a very different and, mentality to Bernie, who previously ran the sport. He was he had he one it. goal, and yeah. it, his only goal was to make as much money as possible from it. Yeah. These are American. I will say Americans have got it right when it comes to the fan experience, and they, yeah. they understand what fans want compared... To, they're not just there to make money. They know that... To make money, you've got to have the fans, and without the fans, you well, don't make money. Well, it needs a shake-up. Yeah, I think they yeah. will. Like, I, I've only been to one, which was the last time they had the loud cars at, in Melbourne, and, man, had no fucking idea what was going on. Um, I no, walked, I tried I, to walk the track, and by the time I walked halfway, the race was over. <laughs> no, I think, I think give the Americans time, and they yeah. will change it, because America understands sport, and it understands... Without being, they, they just know how to do sport well, and I think yeah. they will do it well. Based on, you look at the events that are already run and what they're already into. Uh, well, I, I couldn't care less either way, to be honest. So if Formula One ends up being exciting and cool again, great. But um, if not, if not. I still think I'm going to be more of a highlights guy. No, but it's cool. Everyone's 
He runs. You Sometimes know. people watch it, I'm happy. Yeah. Well, it is, it is cool to watch their fucking highlight videos that they release. Like, I think those videos are some of the tightest edits. Yeah. You know, I love watching those, like yeah. on the Formula One website. Yeah. So. No, it should be sweet. It's going to be a good year. All right, bro. Thanks for coming on the show. No worries. We'll catch up soon. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.